yeah, you guys are, are, are a god class, and, you know, you, not only have you not needed, like, RNG slot roll tuning to get into a raid, but you've also consistently had one of your specs be the best spec in the game for, I mean, just a ridiculous amount of time, so... Looks, seems like all you guys are saying Warlocks seem like they still are con keeping a lot of their power, gaining in a few ways, and the specs look uh, thematically interesting to play and keep their power level. That's good. All right, it is time to speak to a couple of Warlocks about Warlocks and their talent trees. All right, calling it up. So here we go. We got, we got a bunch of Warlocks here. Uh, all of them have been raiding... Uh, at the high levels of world rating, they've all done mythic, a uh, decent amount of high mythic plus. I think every single one of you has done either MDI or high keys uh, and have also, so I think you guys cover all bases of lock. You've also all been playing lock forever and as far as I'm aware have always been lock mains, even though you've played other things. Um, so I think this will be pretty interesting. I already talked to the chat about muting THD will not be an option as much as they want that to be the case, but I'll just have you guys introduce yourself real quick before we go into the tree. Uh, so let's start with splat. Yeah, sure. So, uh, hey everyone, my name is Spet. Um, I'm a Warlock player for Liquids. Uh, I've recently joined Liquids. Before I played in Liquids, I played in Pieces for around three years. Uh, I've been playing uh, playing and maining Warlock since around Mist of Andaria, like around from the Thunder times. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to be here today and talk about Warlock with all of you. Gonna be great. All right. And then, yeah, dude, Splat, I don't know why, but Splat hard farms Giga Chads. It's insane. All right, Zero, what's up? Yo, what's up? I'm Xavo from Echo, I guess. Playing Warlock since like 10 years. And that's about it. Okay. Very cool. And uh, THD, <laughs> what about you? Yo, it's THD. Been uh, been playing the old Warlock since end of WAD. That's right. Uh, I love Warlock. Warlock is Dude, great. Dude, baby. <laughs> yeah. That's true. But like, the thing is, right? I joined this guild in the middle of Legion, so I, I I go quick. Yeah, he did. He he he's he is definitely a baby. Like he he has been. I I think you're like one of the like people who's in this guild that has played the least amount of total time. I think the only person who hasn't played or has played shorter than you is Exile and JPC, right? I think. Probably. Yeah, but yeah, he's. Well, I think a, he, JPC played a long time ago. So. But even though, okay, how it was many? PvP, right? How many days played do you have on your warlock? Even though you started at the end of WAD. I don't know. Shadowlands was like a lower point, but it's like, uh, it's got to be like around seven hundred days, maybe six hundred days. So of of the in the last six years since WAD has been out since the end of WAD. You have played for it 700 days. <laughs> yes. Well, like in Legion, I had 60% of the time online throughout the whole expansion. <laughs> yeah, well, and that was that was because of artifact power, right? Which is a uh, yep something you like a lot. All right, so typically uh, we have a little bit more people on for these because they're not triple DPS specs, but I do have people kind of focus on one spec. The, now, obviously, all of you can talk about and interact with. Uh, different trees like I may have one of you run it down so let's say THD will do affliction if that's what you guys want to do he'll like kind of build the tree for rating a mythic plus and talk about the problems and the good parts and the cool stuff that's coming back stuff that you'll never pick all those things right and all of you guys can comment on all of that uh, just I'm gonna have him actually go mm -hmm. down the tree and then all of you can comment about how that could change how things are tuned what they could be tuned to be all that thing all that stuff and then for the class tree uh, you know, you guys will also just do that. We'll kind of like talk about where Affliction will go. I think a lot of the specs are doing the class tree pretty similarly, right? At least for the first two. Things. Pretty much, so, yeah. So yeah, we can pretty much. So we can probably talk about like the first two as far as you know what you'd pick for all three of them almost, and then like does the the bottom changes between the three specs? I assume. Somewhat in AOE and single target. There's a couple things you'd move around, but not too much. Okay. Um. All right, so we'll probably get started. What do you guys are? Are any of you guys super, super passionate about any specific spec and want to be the one person who is going down that specific one? I know the affliction is like the odd man out because you guys are going to have a lot of takes about Malefic Rapture, but I just don't know how you guys feel about which one you want to do. No, I don't care. I really like oh, the demo and death show trees, but anything works. All right, we'll do. Yep. We'll just do. Okay, so we'll do. Zero will do affliction. Uh, Splat will do Destro and Tishi will do Demo. 
because I know he he was on PTR spawning like a million uh, pets and shit, so that was fun. Before we get into actually building the tree, what are things you guys want to talk about within the class tree alone that are being brought back, are really powerful, uh, things you think could make warlocks, you know, potentially more powerful powerful than they were before? Uh, what, what kind of stuff are you guys happy to see in the class tree? I'm really I, happy to... Oh, we'll start. That's fine. Okay, yeah. I really like, like... The, so, currently on live, we have, like, a talent row that's just Burning Rush, Dark Pact, and Demon Skin, I think. And that talent row, like, now you can just get all that. So you get every single one of that defensive row slash utility row, and more. You just get Soul Link for every spec, so you're just perma 20% DR. You have the Health Stone cooldown back. The only thing I really don't like is the fact that interrupt is on myself and not my pet. I much prefer to interrupt on pet over myself, personally. And I yeah. feel like that's a thing that's probably shared by high level warlocks, but not low level warlocks. Because high, high level, like having interrupt on your pet is just so good for a lot of niche scenarios versus having it on yourself. Yeah, outside yeah, of the true. idea where you have to like actually stop your cast to interrupt now, where before you didn't have to do that, that's a pretty minor thing. But Warlocks could do something where they're on an entire other side of the room hitting a boss or killing an ad while their pet can still be on the boss getting a kick, which is like something that no other class in the entire game can do. And that's something that now you guys don't even have an option. They, they didn't even give you like a choice node, right? Where it's like... Yep. I, f I feel like that would be yep. a better option there. That was actually one of the first things I wanted to talk to you guys about, where like you can choose to still have it on your pet or have it on yourself to not remove that niche. Yeah, I think the max range on it was actually 100 yards like back in the day, or like now, right now. Like if your pet is more than 100 yards away, you can't actually interrupt. And, I think you uh, still can with a macro, really? but the Maybe. pet might despawn a little bit more after that. Yeah, something like that. I remember on Jaina, if you were like too far away, you couldn't interrupt. Oh, with the oh, yeah. with the water elemental? Yeah. No, no, oh, no he's talking about kicking it, her. Yeah, you're kicking Jaina itself. You could send yeah, your pet to stuff. Jaina. Oh, yeah. And yeah. then the hunter didn't have to do the shenanigans or whatever. Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, okay. Also, you guys are have a choice node as well to get an ending resolve to be a weaker version of itself, but with a you know pretty significantly reduced cooldown for more coverage or the option to have Unending Resolve be the same damage reduction it is currently on live. What do you guys think about that? I think it's situational. Like, if there's bosses where you need, like, the shorter cooldown, you obviously pick it. Like, 25% uh, damage reduction is still enough, I think. And if you have, like, a longer interval between, like, big hitting uh, casts or something, you just take the 15% additional reduction. And I think it's a good choice not actually. Yeah, I mean, you have to remember that you're going to probably have Soul Link, so... The yeah. 25% isn't as bad as the 40% like, we have now. Like, in general, like, yeah. all Warlock specs will be more tanky than before, basically. Because yeah, which is so insane. much additional health. Which is insane. You have, like, Dark Pact and stuff. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, that... one of the problems on live right now is that Affliction is by far the squishiest spec on live, then it's Destro, then it's Demo. And now yeah. they just kind of all have the same relative tankiness of um, Demo plus on, on live. Like, the thing they're I more was tanky thinking... than current Demo. The thing I was thinking with with this is that I think you're more likely going to take the 40% in a lot of scenarios. Just because, uh, for example, Astral Shift makes this choice and Hunters now make this choice with their uh, new personal that they have where they can they have the exact same choice node where you can have it be stronger or you can have it have a, have a higher uptime and be a smaller damage reduction. There's definitely a big argument on raid fights for having coverage versus having something bigger. I feel like Warlocks in most cases will opt for the bigger one, though, because, like, who needs coverage when you're just innately a fucking Warlock all the time? You know, and you'd, you'd probably, in a lot of scenarios, default, as opposed to the other classes, in my opinion, you would default to having the higher one to withstand something exceptionally hard to live than just to have another small cooldown, which you don't like. Like, if a, like for example, if a Warlock doesn't have a 25% cooldown for a raid damage event and they're dying, your raid's dead, right? Like, it's not yeah. it has nothing to do with, with anything else. Like, the raid, like, you being dead or alive doesn't matter because if you are dying, so is everyone else. So I feel like you'd kind of want the bigger thing, especially... Yeah, I mean... So wait, what are you guys gaining from, from live till now? You guys are getting... Uh, besides, besides the, like, the whole having Burning Rush available for honestly like the first time in a long time very easily uh you guys are gaining you have a couple like just you have a three percent passive dr with these two points you have a ten percent stam node you have another six percent stam node depending on spec uh you're getting uh all hellstone healing also heals you 
Uh, when you mm -hmm. use Hellstone, you gain Leech. And then also Dark Pact has the ability to also be 45 seconds. I Exactly. That, oh, dude. Yeah, and Soul Link is awesome. a 20% perma DR. And uh, you get Demon Skin, which effectively regenerates your Soul Leech sealed permanently throughout the fight instead of just when you do damage. Yeah, and yeah. before Demon Skin and Dark Pact were actually on the same talent row, so you can pick them both at the same time now. And that doesn't include a Soul Burn Hellstone. Uh, what did yeah. you say, Zero, about Demon Skin? I said the uh, Demon Skin and Dark Pack were on the same row right now. So you can yeah, pick them yeah, both you... at the same time. Yep. And, and Fell Armor is actually sort of a uh, stagger now with your Soul Leech. Like 10% of the incoming absorbed damage of Soul Leech is actually spread out as well. Oh, yeah. Yep. And that's a, it's two points, right? So that's actually 10%. Yeah, but oh, it's yeah, a exactly. really good two-pointer, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, it's really, really good. And it's also, like, yeah, it would honestly be good with either part of that, and it has both. And then you guys do have... Uh, Soulburn is coming back, right? This was not in the game currently? Yeah, it's yeah. not correct. Uh, I remember this being in the game, or something similar to Soulburn previously. It's a much guys... different version, for sure, but... Yeah. yeah. So now at any point in the fight with... Uh, I assume this does not have a cooldown. Uh, you will be able to spend one soul shard to empower the next ability. There's a couple of, I, I think a few of them are like very niche slash not super relevant. Uh, obviously, health funnels, insanely niche. Uh, but demonic gateway can be a huge clutch situation if you have like forgotten to put one down or in progression. Being able to do that instantly is like so mm -hmm. value. And then the hellstone thing is just, you know, max health. A fat Hellstone and just a 20% max health for 12 seconds thing, as if you didn't need more, just as an option to have. That's really good. Yeah, that one is a DPS cooldown. For demo, at least. <laughs> that oh, is yeah. true, yep. Oh, what does it do for demo? Demo scales well, it, off it, health it, still, so that yep. is a cooldown for demo. That's right there. a cooldown. It's an offensive cooldown. Wait, how does it scale with... Is it... Uh... It's still the same thing as... Um, yeah, the it's demonic demo. consumption. Oh, I see. It's, it siphons the health of your pets. Also, you'll, oh, you'll, you'll never, see. The, the you'll never not pick yeah. demonic consumption if you're mm -hmm. later. Okay, I feel so like that's kind of a problem, fight, but yeah. You can send it. <laughs> well, I guess if there's any class in the game who can rip their Hellstone for a DPS benefit and not really care yeah, it's about Warlock. it, it would certainly be Warlock. Yeah. Warlock. Uh, you guys have some new abilities coming back. Or, sorry, some abilities uh, coming back that are slightly different, I believe, with uh, Teachings of the Black Harvest. And then you guys also have... Summon Jailer, uh, Dimensional Rift, and oh, there's another one. Oh, it was in the demo tree that I'm thinking of. The uh, we'll talk about this later. The Nether Portal thing. But uh, what do you oh, guys? God. What do you guys think about the stuff at the bottom here? Which one? Uh, the stuff at the very bottom of the class tree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you guys think about the capstones of class tree? I mean, I feel like decimating bolt is like it's kind of an odd one. I feel like like yeah. it, a decimating bolt can be good for like maybe sticking it somewhere in the Destro tree or something, but, like, Decimating Bolt for Demo is, like, eh, and then Decimating Bolt for Aph is, like, it can be good, but that's only if you really go into, like, the drain setup. And we Dimensional Rift just feels like an oddity. But one thing that I've noticed with all the Warlock trees is all three class, all three of the spec trees have wolf rids in them. It's not in the general tree. This is all, th all of them have wolf rids. This has happened in multiple classes so far, and I, I think they're doing it for a reason. So, for example, all three warrior specs take anger management, and they're all three in their class trees or spec trees. Sorry, uh, there's another one. Oh yeah, all all paladins. I'm pretty sure in a lot of scenarios take divine toll. I think Rhett doesn't take it sometimes, um, and divine toll is in all of their spec trees and not their class tree. And I think the argument to be made there, because I mentioned that exact same argument you just made in the warrior talk about well. If, there's some dead stuff at the bottom of the warrior tree. Maybe put anger management there since every single warrior spec utilizes it and uses it. And the answer was resounding like, please don't do that because then we would just be forced into it and we wouldn't be able to interact with the less with the rest of the class tree. So I don't know if that would involve like if if basically would it be boring as if there was another capstone in the warlock class tree and every single one of your specs always took it no matter what instead of being able to actually play around with the other three. But it would also free up points in your spec tree. It's just kind of weird. I think they do it so we actually spend the point in Wilfrid's in the spec tree, so we are like hindered in taking more caps, uh, capstones even. Because Wilfrid's is usually so strong, especially for demo and uh, destruction, that if you would spend it in the general tree, you free up one more slot on the other tree. So I feel like the problem with that though is that the uh, the tyrant is such an odd cooldown. Same with the infernal, like three minute and one thirty is so odd. 
Yeah, sure. Versus just That's like true. slapping it on two minute, especially because you have some odd cooldowns that go with demo, like Grimoire Felguard being two minute. I'm I'm just not a fan. It. I'm just not a fan of Wilfrid's to begin with because I like shorter base cooldowns, like make Inferno two minutes oh, yeah. and just get rid of yeah. uh, Wilfrid's, for example, to begin with. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, I think agree. that's like I'm, I'm the only chance they need to make, right? Prefer like to make a 20 Inferno second Infernal that's two minute over a 30 second Infernal that's three. I mean, I think most yeah. people would. This is actually interesting because a lot of other, most other classes that have, you know, anger management style things where by spending your resource, you are, you are reducing the cool, the uh, CD of your main like offensive cooldown. That's generally a very well liked system uh, in the game. But you guys are saying it just doesn't really quite work for Warlocks. Well, it does work, but it, it just works just... way too well, and like our cooldowns yeah. are just have just been like turbo annoying ever since. Like Infernal's been three, and Tyrant's one and a half. It's such an yeah. odd thing to put into everything, because we have a much like we had a bunch of other cooldowns that just have like these other timers. Like for example, for Demo, you have a three minute cooldown, a two minute cooldown, and a one thirty cooldown. If you get Tyrant to a one minute cooldown, suddenly all that just flows a lot better than having Tyrant at a one thirty. And you're, yep. you're, you're saying that it's so necessary and required for the spec that it's basically... It's like the Whirling Dragon Punch argument for Wind Walker. Like, Whirling Dragon Punch has been a talent you've taken in the last talent row for so long that it's just become part of the class to where it feels weird even having to talent into it. It should just almost feel like it's baseline. And you guys are making that argument for all of the CDR elements of Wilfred's. Pretty much for everything but F. Yeah. Okay. And they fixed yeah, that by they, making the three-minute exactly. cooldown two minutes in Shadowlands. Yeah. They literally did exactly. that. Exactly. They changed Dark Lair from three minutes to two minutes because of this issue. But then still gave it Wilfred's. Yeah, you could have Wilfred's. And yeah. now you have it as well. And now you make it a one-minute cooldown, basically, almost. Okay. Um. All right. So let's... let's uh. Actually, wait. Before we go on, is there any other stuff that we won't naturally path through in the class tree that you think is significant? We talked about positive stuff. Is there anything on the class tree? Uh, and again, if we will cover this in pathing, we can have that conversation later. Is there anything you guys don't really like here or decisions that don't really make a ton of sense? I hate the position of uh, accrued vitality, uh, like after Demon Skin and Fell Armor in the middle, mm -hmm. right above Demonic Circle. Oh, it just yeah. feels so odd that there's a Drain Life node right there, like uh, hindering me of getting Demonic Circle, investing two points into that. I don't know, like it should be swapped with like, on the left side, there's a couple of drain life traits, like somewhere there. I mean, even if you swapped Demonic Circle and Accrued Vitality and just remove every other point of the argument of whether Accrued Vitality should even be there, you would have the option to, you, you Accrued Vitality becomes essentially not required for anything, right? Because you can still path down to yeah. everything below it except for lifeblood. Yeah. Uh, that without would, it would, that, yeah. that would work as well okay and then we already talked about the kick thing we can uh, it's deeply understood how how that could be an issue although this is weird like thd said actually they got an ad i forgot to run ads before this so they got an ad right when you were talking about this but i i think a lot of high-end players is a v it's very controversial i've universally heard high-end players say that this is bad and then i've seen cat like you know, just your average warlock, like most warlocks be like, oh, this is so nice. I don't even have to micromanage my pet anymore or anything. It's like, it's, it's pretty weird how it's like pretty split, how some people really, really like this. Yeah, you could, just, uh, you could do some stuff. Node for sure, probably. You could do some stuff uh, with like a pet interrupt that you couldn't do. This one, of course, you can interrupt on your mount, for example, with a pet. As I said, like you can move it away, like far away and still interrupt. I don't know. It's so much nicer to have a pet. Yeah. I think I think choice node is definitely the move here. Uh, you guys have one other thing I thought that was kind of interesting here. Yeah. Okay. So your all's tree at the beginning. Uh, I think I, we'll see how it is when it's path. But you guys have a ton of stuff to spend at the beginning. Uh, most other classes spend an average of nine or ten points before moving on to the mid and lower levels of the tree. Obviously, the philosophy of these trees is it gets stronger as it goes on, and you are getting your biggest throughput at the bottom, and you have to invest all of your time into it or all of your points kind of to get down there. Uh, you guys, I think you spend, it's like 11 or 12 at the top, right? Like you spend a decent amount, but you Something also like just, that, yeah. you have way less points down below though. So I'm going to kind of get into this when we actually fill out the tree, but it seems like your all's tree is totally different than every other tree before. There has been uh, more, more than half are focused on throughput at the bottom of the class tree. And then there are a few, uh, kind of on that note they are very very good the few that are uh utility based at the capstone level of the class tree but these 
it doesn't actually every single other tree that ends with throughput when you get to this 20 required points you slam the rest of the 11 points down in the capstone level no matter what that is like you as you every single choice that you had above this point for utility is gone i feel like with warlocks that's not true when you guys get to 20 you kind of get everything you want down here and you still have points to go up and grab utility based on the fight and i i think this and we'll kind of see what you all think after we end up building these but i feel like this tree has more going on as far as choice while th this tree has done the best job of making you damage throughput capstones while still giving you choice early in the tree even like gateway like there's scenarios where there are fight gateways insane it's one of the reasons why warlock is so required but you could absolutely spec out of gateway on a fight and gain something that's good and i think that's so fucking cool um yeah i mean there's also like i mean there's definitely scenarios where Banish is good and definitely scenarios where even Greater Banish could be good just to have a one minute Banish instead of a 30 or CCing like something permanently like Gul'dan last phase or, you know, Shadow Fury and Mythic Plus with the added benefit of maybe talenting into the uh, the Cone Slow Shadow Flame below that. But, you know, in raiding scenarios, that's not really a thing you want, but that's good. All right, it is time. We are going to start with Affliction uh now here's what we're going to do we are going to do uh all three class trees first and we're going to kind of be done with the class tree and then we are going to go and look at each individual spec tree one after another so it'll go affliction destro demo class trees and then we're, i don't think the destro and demo will take as long because a lot of stuff will be similar most of the initial conversation will happen about the talents the first time we see them through affliction and then we will take more time individually on all of the individual spec trees talk about the builds uh and then again uh, I'm going to have Zerwo do the Affliction one, both class and spec, but obviously anyone is free to butt in at any time to give any take about any talent we're talking about throughout the entirety of the rest of this. Uh, also, Zerwo, do you do, do you go to bed? I, I know it's like almost midnight for you right now. Uh, what Are you like a are you a tired man? Are you trying to go to bed in like the next I few mean, hours? I'm up. I'm up since like 8 a.m., but I'm chilling. Okay, you're chilling. Okay, I just don't want to like have you stay up too late. Uh, yeah, that's, that's why so I good. wanted to do yours early in case you had to leave. Um, no, that's all right. Fine. So we'll start here. Now, for everyone else watching, again, this is a major wowhead diff. We can't actually, it's going to be kind of hard to follow along because you will always have one extra point to spend in this entire tree at every single tier because uh, we have to spend our first one on Curse of Enfeeblement. So just imagine we always have one extra point here. We probably won't bring it up too much. All right, so where are you going, uh, Zerwo, as affliction in a raiding environment? Yeah, I mean, you grab Demon Skin, you grab Fell Armor, of course, like both of those. You grab Spell Lock. Multi coil. I guess we get accrued vitality despite it being uh, on yeah, to just take. But your we only want... way to yeah, you need circle. Yeah, we so, want so... circle for sure. And this is something I found interesting right away. Uh, what would you take? Are you taking spell lock for pathing even on a fight where you would not want or need an interrupt just for the ten percent stam node? Yeah, I would take it for the ten percent stam node or for the um, like if I don't require the stamina, I would get amplified curse depending on the boss fights, maybe like on interrupt fights yeah. or something like that. I think it's kind of an issue though, right? Probably. Like most most yeah. classes actually that have kicks do have the option, even even worse class trees than this, have the option to not select their kick, to get something on a fight that does not have a kick to get something more powerful. So I think they've done good jobs with uh, being able to spec out of some of your utility for either better utility that is relevant to your fight or for throughput. Uh, on Warlock, mm -hmm. they kind of shoehorn you into taking Spell Lock, even when you won't use it, and I feel like that's just a pathing error that can be fixed. It sounds like as w as good as this tree is, this row right here seems needlessly restrictive, and there are two things you're picking in Spell Lock and Accrued Vitality that are not always relevant that you have to take to get things you need. And, yeah, yeah something to point out. I think yep. that could be solved by swapping the 10% stamina node with Accrued. Pretty sure. Yeah, oh, maybe. Just putting we'll that. Yeah, actually, that it is actually pretty that those two specifically are all solved by that because you can skip accrued yeah but i think they would need to change accrued vitality to a one point node then because otherwise you will never take desperate power like below the stamina right now mm -hmm. the zero to drain life yeah like no way you invest four points into that yeah, you could probably just swap <laughs> yeah. around the, the nodes and make the demonic embraces a two pointer five and ten yeah for sure all right, so right now you have on a, you have demonic circle and and you said you might spend. I, I would actually like to go if you feel like anything else up here is optional for AF. I would like to go on and then come back later. So so far, oh, okay. Yeah. So and then and then talk about. So yeah, basically the idea is 
assuming the stuff at the bottom is the most powerful, the most interesting way to have these conversations is to fill it out, get the best stuff, and then with any remaining points, actually going back and talking about what you could have based on the scenario. And then that kind mm -hmm. of shows the element of choice. So we'll kind of move on with this. And again, if anyone's keeping along, we have actually only spent 10 points in the top because we had to spend an extra one on Curse from Feeble. And 10 is totally respectable too uh, up here. That's yeah, not a bad amount. If you would want to do that, you could unselect accrued vitality, for example. Yeah, we we would go back later to get that, for example. Okay, and that but, would also uh, have you out of a uh, demonic circle. Yeah, okay, exactly. Cool. Sure. Like we would we would take demonic inspiration and wrathful minion because those are throughput. Uh, that is oh wrathful minion and where is it demonic fortitude? You said or no no left side and right side of demonic circle wrathful minion and demonic inspiration. Yeah. You would take those. You would take Sweet Souls under Demonic Inspiration for sure. Now, this is interesting. Your Hellstone heals you for an additional 10%. That's whatever. Any part of your raid member using a Hellstone, all 20 or in Heroic 30 players, anytime they heal a Hellstone, yeah. you get healed for it's the entire important. amount that they get healed by. That is insane. For forget the rest of Warlock's defensiveness. Forget a passive 20% damage reduction. Forget everything else. If you were to just give this thing alone to the squishiest class in the game, they would be noticeably tankier. Like, it would be probably better than having something like a bark skin in most raid encounters. Like, this is insane. Level yeah. one of tank uses it. Like, I remember in Legion when I was calling for other people to use Haystone for me. This will happen again. Yeah, so, that yeah. is so good. All right, and then I also was... this enables your headstone to be the DPS cooldown for demo, I guess. <laughs> so you can call another people to headstone for yours instead. Um, we would grab Strength of the Will then for the bigger unending mm -hmm. resolve and Grim of Synergy. Of course, that's a current legendary. Why wouldn't we pick it? It's a big damn. And now we have 14 out of. 31 or 13 out of 30 mm -hmm. i guess so in reality you'd have to fill. spend yeah you'd have to spend seven more points to even move on to the capstone level but for now we'll just do mm -hmm. six and play it by ear yeah i mean we would pick, pick dark pact of course and then i guess we go back up and take the demonic fortitude on the top right side uh okay how many points do we have 16 uh 16 15? yeah so you need four more uh yeah we take burning rush top right mobility i guess i feel like that's so nice well, like i haven't seen a warlock burning russian raid in so long i, yeah. I don't know I, I just feel like that's such a nice thing for you all yeah and now i guess we pick accurate vitality and demonic circle and that Sadly. brings you to 20 however let's spend one more as if this tree was actually correct and then we'll just talk okay. about at the end what we would change then I would pick uh, Frequent Donor for 45 seconds Dark Pact, below Dark Pact on the mm -hmm. left side. Okay. And then obviously we'll talk about the choice later, but there will be a point at the end of the tree where you could just spend on Gateway on a Gateway fight, for example. Yeah, yeah, probably. All right, so now the Capstone level is unlocked. Exactly. We pick Soul Link, of course. Way too broken. Like If you don't pick that, I don't know what you're doing. 20% <laughs> less damage taken is just too good. And uh, you always pick Soul Conduit. Like, so, having Soul Conduit in a general tree is actually so nice for every spec. The, what and, specs don't uh, have Soul Conduit right now? Um, all, all of have them it. have it, but yeah, have you it, only yeah. spec it as destruction right now and in like M plus settings with like demo and a specific legendary. But aside from that, you don't pick it right now. So Okay, so you're just kind of getting something you didn't previously have that's decently powerful mm -hmm. for free. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay. it's especially really big for demo right now. Like, uh, when we go to the demo tree, whoever does it. But Okay, then we pick Summon Jailer. I mean, I don't know how, how much damage it does. It's not yet implemented right now. Like, we see how it works out, but... Yeah, it's, it sounds seems cool. weird. It's like, of every soul you've, it, you've collected, you'll blast nearby enemies for each tormented soul consumed. And you get them by killing targets, but also occasionally escaped souls you previously collected. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the old Legion affliction artifact basically where you get like swords and you accumulate the buff and then buff the jailer basically so how does this work on like single target it's a good question i mean uh, probably it just spawns swords that you have to collect okay i mean it's a, if it's anything like the legion artifact you just randomly get them through yeah. and you got yeah. three on the yeah. pull always. like the buff just stacks up basically is what i mean by collecting you don't have to physically on top of the soul i guess you okay. just get them 
now? Yeah, and then we... Okay. Go, no, you can go ahead. I would say we take Inquisitor's Gaze. Because it's a one-point node. Then we take uh, Decimating Bolt. Because it's pretty good. Uh, that's our filler. Yeah, before, before we move on, I think this is really weird. Because, like, if you want Decimating Bolt, regardless of the tuning of Inquisitor's Gaze, you just don't have to spend two points on this packed talent and it's just like a better pack like this pack thing just seems like it's in a totally weird spot right like it's just like yeah. a purely aoe thing that costs two points uh yeah it's and then weird. it's just in the way of something that isn't aoe and then like it's an obvious option to go around it i mean i guess the argument could be made that it's like okay well in an aoe scenario you take this and then in a single target you don't have to think about it but the fact that it's two points seems extra weird yeah it should be one point for sure yeah. It's an oddity, um, but you could say that it's two points on AoE, two points on single target, but for Demo, that is actually a single target thing. It doesn't show on Wildhead, but... We take Soulburn, of course. I mean, nice to see it back. I just don't like it that we still, on the matter of shard spending is actually your damage, and you sacrifice damage for this. Like, back in the day, you had Soul Shards, and Soulburn didn't take away from your damage. That's a little bit sad, but what can you do? I don't know if I'd rather had a cooldown on it, or... They keep the shot costs. I'm not sure what's better. I can Maybe see the their thought process because it's like it's something where you can just kind of always use it as like a unique thing, and but it does mm -hmm. it does cost damage. But I think there's multiple ways you would use this where, in a weird way, Hellstone will give you damage. So you're spending that Soul Shard for a DPS increase for Demo, which is strange. Yeah, then... that's true. I mean, it's probably a high skill cap ability as well. You can save yourself like Soul and Drain Life, or you can. Save, a, save like your raid with demonic gateway instant cast as you said earlier like it will be used to make good plays I, I think so i mean it's a good ability but i just don't like the soul shot cost that much do you think but they could fine, also so soul burn soul swap used to be kind of sick but i i see that mm -hmm. both of those are now are here but they don't have any interaction with each yeah, other yeah we're, we're, awesome. we're not talking about soul swap that talent is uh that is awful yeah okay uh and then now there is a couple more things to talk about at the capstone level. So as most people in chat are seeing, we even have one more point here than you would see. And that point can, you can actually the only class I believe that can get all of their capstones. Um, yeah. But the point is, is that you don't necessarily have to do that. The, the thing I wanted to talk about is this pact of the imp mother, which is a throughput talent is gated behind something that is exclusively utility. And if you mm -hmm. wanted to spend the two points in pact of the imp mother, you'd have to make a decision to get something you made may not want to get throughput what do you think about that yeah i don't like it <laughs> i don't know teaching of the black harvest for example is so weak it needs a buff for sure um and if they buff teaching of the black harvest so maybe Cinch magic always gives you damage reduction if you press it you know if you don't like you don't necessarily need to dispel or something then i would maybe take it but i don't know giving up soul conduit for it for example is not worth it at all yeah. And like you give up dimensional rift and soul conduit, then uh, like no shot. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Uh, so where would you go with your last uh three points here at the bottom? Yeah, now, packed off the Arida and dimensional rifts probably. Okay. I'm not sure right now how exactly dimensional rift works for affliction because I don't think it generates shards right now, but it does generate uh, shard bits for destruction. So I would assume it can proc shards, but. If it doesn't, then maybe it's actually not that good. It doesn't currently, but that's probably just like an alpha thing. Yeah. They just ripped yeah, it straight sh from it the should. Destro tree. Um, it, it says generate three soul shot fragments, for example. Maybe like all three users generate one shot. I'm not sure. And you have spent uh, 31. Now keep in mind, you will have one extra talent to spend at any point in this tree. As some people are seeing already, that could be Demonic Gateway. If you needed mm -hmm. a stun on a fight or a better Shatter Fury, you could knock off, you know, two points pretty much anywhere of, like, not something that's in immediately required uh, to grab those things. So you guys still kind of have the choice. It seems like this yeah. is... The only question is if you have to go AoE at the bottom, I think you... What are you missing out on if you have to, like... If you're thinking, like, of Affliction in a more Mythic Plus format where you'll almost certainly take Gateway, you'll almost certainly take Shadow Fury. What kind of stuff are you missing out on or changing? Um, I think you would get rid of Dimensional Rift, for example. Like, I, like in Mythic Plus setting, it's not that great, I'd argue. Okay. And you would probably get, get rid of the shorter Dark Pack cooldown, stuff like that. Like Usually you would sacrifice um, 
durability or stamina or whatever for for the damage then and also the inquisitor's gaze i guess that's purely single target I, i'd argue so you would maybe go, like, get rid of inquisitor's gaze and dimension rift even for pact of the annihilan or whatever annihilan yeah and then and then decimate and then you have an extra point here so you could also still keep decimating bolt with that so yeah it seems like affliction is kind of interacting with the whole tree Let's talk about some of the stuff that exists that you are not you are not dealing with other ever. It's like imp step, for example, is a two point thing that is just uh, making your burning rush a little faster, and also the dr thing is mm -hmm. not as important. Uh, fell domination, quick fiends, never talked about amplify curse. What about uh, what about some of these things? Yeah, fell domination can be really good actually, because there's numerous cases where our pet just dies because of soul link because abilities don't uh, like do too much damage, especially in M plus right now. So you would probably get fair domination in that case if you notice your pet dying a lot because you don't want to spend casting your pet, like hard casting your pet every, I don't know, three minutes or whatever, uh, how, how often it dies. So it's a, it's a good talent depending on if your pet dies or not, or if you actually have like a fight like Saya where you go like to different platforms and your pet gets stuck and you can't get it over, you quickly summon it and have it ready, basically. So stuff like that can work. And Amplify Curse is like purely PvP, right? I'm pretty sure this has basically zero interaction with like a at least a raiding environment. I mean, they're unable to critically strike. Curse of Weakness we don't even have right now. I don't know where it is. Maybe it's gone. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe it comes in later. Oh, it's the, not baseline? It, no, it's not. It's we don't not have it right now. It's not Curse of no one knows yeah, I don't have it right now. It's just gone. Oh, weird. Because I was thinking, like, I mean, we yeah. weakness was, like, oh, like a way that Warlocks had raid utility as if they didn't already have enough of that. Uh, they, <laughs> But, like, you do, like, tanks don't get crit in a raid, right? So, like, that has no raid benefit. And then the target's casting speed, Curse of Tongues almost never works on raid encounter stuff. Yeah. it. I mean, it has some uses. Like, if you had this on Anduin, for example, kicking mm -hmm. off the ads would have been so much easier. Additional casting speed reduce is pretty big in that case, but, I mean... It's yeah, really I think, niche. I think Anduin's the only time this expansion where that was relevant. Actually, wait, Tishi, wasn't there like, was it was it beta when like when we were testing Castle Nathria, where like Curse of Tongues made like raid bosses? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, it made them like decent a, their abilities as well and stuff. It had one use. There was a one other thing. Um, you definitely used it on Sylvanas for like the first week, and it made her entire encounter bug out, and they disabled it on her. Uh, yeah, KT adds would have worked as well. True. Um, the caster adds on KT. Some other stuff you guys didn't go through. So, again, drain life now channels faster and restores health. Uh, we talked about... Yeah. Is this actually... So, the, there's two new things down here. Dark Fury and Shadow Flame, right? The, uh, where... The, I think the Shadow Flame... Shadow Fury cooldown was a previously a talent, right? Yes. Exactly. But, but the Shadow, Shadow Flame, Flame is slow is... Uh, seems potentially really strong for some encounters there's, there's very few slows of that level in the entire game and even if it's, if it's for a short duration like i think the only thing that's like on demand that is just better that you frequently have in a raid because you don't have a frost mage is like uh it's like it's like D D slow i think it's the only thing that is like that consistently good uh, on demand and pretty common mm -hmm. so that's like i think i think that's like shouldn't be looked over I, I don't think you'll take it a lot but the fact that warlock can path down and get it is actually pretty powerful no, definitely. AoE 70% slow is uh, pretty good, for yeah, sure. Oh yeah, piercing hell. Well, Zero, I'm sure Zero knows about the other combo in the Affliction Tree with Vile Taint yeah. and Amplify Curse. Amplify Curse, yeah. Oh yeah. But oh. Uh, that's capped to 8 targets, sadly. Yeah. I was, well, we'll talk about the Affliction Tree later when we get there, but yeah. Yeah. So I think I think that's pretty much good for Affliction. You just said you'd basically run the same build in Mythic Plus. you just like swap around some AOE stuff, and then when you swap back to a raid, you can get rid of the utility you don't necessarily need. Obviously, have one point that's one more point that's available on the tree at the moment, and then you can kind of grab whatever you want. All right. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, what do you guys uh, do? You guys have any more takes on the affliction class tree? Uh, Splat and Zerbo before we or Splat and THD before we move on to Destro. There, there could be some cases where you might want to take the drain talents if inevitable demise is tuned well, since yeah. affliction is pretty much the only spec that actually can gain throughput from those drain talents. Oh, and yeah, Amplify Curse sure. is like kind of nice for that one thing I talked about with Affliction. Um, like because we have we have Inevitable Demise in the Affliction Tree, 
the drain talents could be relevant, for example. All right, cool. Let's move on to Destro. This is Splat's territory. I'm interested in how much is going to change. I still feel like all three Warlock specs are... I think it's like 80% of things are going to be selected in like all scenarios, uh, which is both boring, but at the same time, it's really powerful. So it's like, I don't know. I mean, how mad can you be that it's good, it's right? So, all right, Splat, where are we going yeah. for, for Destro? Yeah, so, I mean, as you said, it's like basically like very very close to each other right we have a lot of good notes like we take uh, both demon skin and philama again mm -hmm. for destruction as well and uh, we also want to grab down and grab the demonic embrace it's just way too good to pass on like 10 percent stamina is so op yep and we talked um, about it before it's kind of a weird pathing thing with kick there but we already talked about it yeah exactly it feels weird that you're like forced into taking kick to like get this like stamina note but uh um, yeah it's definitely something that you look at I also think uh, it's weird. I, I I know they're giving you 10% stam because I think you guys already have this, correct? Like, yes, don't you guys already have this? Yeah. Yes, yeah, we do it over passive. Yeah, it's it's passive just, so, so it is definitely a thing where they're giving you something baseline, but it does it is very eye-opening that other classes have nodes that say things like two-pointer that passively reduces your damage by three percent hilariously enough you guys also have this but it also does something else and they have like 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 five percent stam and then it's just like every other class in the game is fiending for that and they're like holy shit it's just it's just that the point of these trees is to kind of have each point be relevant uh and like like relative uh power to one another and then as you go down the tree that power gets stronger but the thing is is it's very evident with these trees that some classes are just built diff and warlock is one of them where if you just look at even if your half of the tree is you handing back the power that they already have and the other half is amplifying it or improving it the half that they're giving back is just so obvious how much warlocks have that other classes don't <laughs> like yeah. this this single point of one 10 percent stamp even though it was baseline and they are giving it back it's just like how do you guys just have that and everything else <laughs> The, the thought process about all these defensives and stuff for Warlock is that the uh, fantasy about Warlock is sacrificing your health for stuff, so you would need more like survivability, right? <laughs> and yeah. uh, they got rid of most of the stuff that sacrifices our health, like uh, Life Tap back in the day. Still have Burning Rush, for example, or I mean, Dark Pact also sacrifices our health, but uh, yeah, I don't know. They just keep adding all the defensives back, and now we're even tankier than we were before. Yep, amen to that. Uh, all right, Splat, where are we going for the rest of this in a raiding environment? Yeah, so we also want to grab Demonic Inspiration right next to the stamina node. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then obviously Sweet Souls below it. It's also just like way too good. Then you can grab Strength of the Will again and Dark Pact. To a right uh, of... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the 40%. And then Dark Pact, obviously. Okay. Yeah, and then we can take Dark Pact Reduction as well. Okay, so that's left side too. So, okay, so we want to go over and grab Mortal Coil. And we take both Wrathful Minion and Demonic Fortitude, two very good nodes as well. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. We also want to go down and grab uh, Grim of Synergy. And uh, here again, like with the remaining points here, there's not like like great options left. Like this, like very uh, like dependent, right? Like Vanish can be used in some situations and like so on and so forth. So we just like again grab the two points and accrued like, Vitality and then the Demonic Circle here. Yeah, ex this is literally the exact same thing and decision making that Affliction yeah. is making, and then yeah. every single one of them just has to spend three points to get Demonic Circle, which we don't even need to spend a lot of time on. That's just like a super weird thing, so they could yeah, it definitely make that a little better. Uh, and then you would actually, in a real tree where you don't have to spec into Curse of Enfeeblement, you would actually have to spend one more point here to even have access to the Capstone levels. So what would that uh, what would that point be in most scenarios? Do you think is it is it just choice? Is it banish? Gateway when you yeah, need it. Yeah, I, I think it is just choice mainly, right? I mean, Gateway is obviously, like, probably on a lot of fights, you can utilize it. It is kind of a niche button, but at the same time, it's also, like... But uh, but we want to grab Burning Rush as well, right? Like, there's yeah. fights where you don't need Burning Rush. Like, there's a lot of cases where you actually don't have that much movement, like very small bus rooms and stuff, but it's, like, generally a very good button to have, right? I think yeah. we'll expect this, like, 90% of the yeah. time, unless you really don't need it. Especially as Destro, right? I feel like Destro, like, very... It feels really bad to have to run across distances, and Burning Rush is just, like, the best thing for that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, so now you have access to the capstones of Destro Warlock. I'm just yeah. going to go ahead and so, yeah. guess that you're selecting Soul Link. Oh, yeah, we definitely need that one. And let's grab Soul Conduit as well. Okay, Soul Conduit. And we take the tail again. And we grab the eye. Into Decimating Bolt. Into, you guessed it, Soul Burn. 
into Pact of Erda, into Dimensional Rift. And you will have one extra point here, and then that is any utility on the tree, one point into Pact if you're doing any kind of rain or firing. Uh, and then you also could grab, I mean, just basically any single point on the tree now you have access to based on the scenario. I think in a lot of cases it's Gateway. And then yeah, it's the exact same like case again as yeah. there was with the affliction, right? It's like completely utility based, like whatever you need. Like if you don't need the gate, you can also like. I still think that the fill domination top left is also a really good option because pets have a tendency to just like die randomly. So that's always always good if you don't need the gate. I'm just trying to think and like, and then now when you're thinking like in a mythic plus environment, when you're like almost certainly taking shadow fury, and even if you don't need gate in that specific key, you are. Let me just spec out of all the capstone stuff, like. If you need Shadow Fury, and then you probably want Dark Fury, although it's like kind of its own thing, uh, what, what are what are the things you are dropping up here while still keeping all of your Capstone talents in like a dungeon, for example, for Destro? Since I imagine it's not going to majorly change, what are the things you are dropping that allow you to keep your throughput but still gain things like stun? Is it is it Dark Pact? I I don't I don't I don't know about think that, you right? ever drop Dark Pact. I think is you always burning? have Dark Pact. I think. Uh... If you want to pick Gateway, I think a talent you could drop in the... Uh, let me see here. Where are we at? Could be uh, Mortal Coil too, right? Like, I, But it's also really good for stops. Yeah. And then you get health from it too. But like, you could definitely see yourself in a dungeon and it's like, okay, I'm a Warlock, right? Like, I have Dark Pact and I, I, I have Dark Pact, the shorter Dark Pact and like stun and all this shit. Like, do I really need Mortal Coil and 6% more health when I'm already not dead, right? I think that's definitely a... A thought process where if you're trying to gain points for utility i feel like warlock is one of the only classes that can realistically sacrifice some of its defensiveness to gain things that make them a little bit more viable in all content yeah, yeah you could exactly. also sacrifice I mean, it... budding rush for example yeah I mean, exactly yeah, you don't need yeah. need the dungeons right it's like dude you guys just get it yeah this is i mean like i i've already i haven't lost any throughput at the bottom of this tree basically because i remember you guys said in like an aoe situation you might not take rift for example like you you yeah. have everything you like really really want maybe actually you'd take pact uh yeah. and you, you get everything you get feldom you get yep. gateway shadow fury dark fury keep in mind you have one extra point that isn't available on wowhead right so like this is all just very powerful and and there is an element of choice as well which is good uh do you have any I know we, we've spent most of our time talking in affliction about like the choices or difference do you guys have any takes on on the destro class tree uh before we move on to demo not really looks seems, good yeah seems really about everything. Seems and i think like the destro tree is probably the most like the one that's riddled with the most choices and it's actually probably one of the, the best one of the three in my opinion is that because uh demo has a couple of more actual like legit damage nodes on the tree and also the same thing with affliction with the drain life talents yeah pretty much okay. yeah. yeah all right so we will go on to demo here with uh thd i do want to say that even though it's powerful there 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 are other classes that have more choice and power as well i, I it is just kind of like the same thing over and over again and i feel like that there could be an ele more of an element of choice if you know teachings of the black harvest wasn't just a giant roadblock accrued vitality you are you you actually have two less points in your whole tree right now because this exists right like you yeah. could and you could all see exactly where you would potentially put that based on the fight so all right, yeah, over, exactly. over to Demo with uh with THD. I can probably guess a bit of it, but I'll let you do it none nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, we're pretty much going to go down the same round. Obviously, uh, you want the Demon Skin, you want the Fill Armor, you want that Spell Lock to get the, the Stam Node, you want the Mortal Coil to get the Stam Node, you want Raffle Minion, you want Demonic Inspiration, your pet class, you need the pet damage, you want Sweet Souls, you want Dark Pact, and then you just, you know, you want Strength of Will because Demonic Durability is very niche. Uh, Grimoire oh. Synergy, your pet class, you you really want Grimoire Synergy because it's just 10% damage increase randomly. And then from here, you know, you kind of are shoehorned into picking a Crude Vitality Demonic Circle. And then you can honestly, you don't really need the 15 second less cooldown on pack. Like I've, I've kind of like, because I feel like 45 second pack is like way overkill. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly, I guess yeah, it just depends. It just depends. Yeah, on the I think it's again very situational, right? A, de a depend, right? Like if an AOE's like, every fifty seconds, sure. Like, yeah, that would, dude. dude <laughs> like, the the amount of other class mains that are hearing this shit right now, they're losing their. They like, just imagine yeah. being a hunter and picking dodge in their tree, and you guys are like, man, you know what? 
I don't even know if we... <sighs> do we really need 45 second dark pact? Like, <laughs> 45 so Zemo, seconds? I would probably <laughs> opt to pick Feldom at the top left over Burning Rush just to have access to Gateway. Now you can pick Burning Rush still. Okay. But then after that, you're obviously going to pick Soul Link. You're going to go... Now, this is a little bit funny here. You might want to pick Inquisitor's Gaze, but for Demo, Pack to the Nihilin is actually single target, not AoE. Because Demo doesn't have a AoE button in Fury. So uh, you want Pack to so the Nihilin. So it's, a, it's a tuning thing, probably, right? Yeah. Like, you, you don't know how powerful Inquisitor's Gaze is yet. You just assume it's going to... Isn't there a fucking... This is like, there's an Arcane Mage talent, meme talent, that's just... Yeah, like Arcane this. Familiar. Yeah, this is just <clears throat> Arcane Familiar, but for Warlocks. Right? Now, the so. question is, does Inquisitor's Gaze have, have health, and does it help Demo in any way? If it does, that is a must. <laughs> yeah, yeah because not, if you read the tooltip, it feels yeah. like it's like almost like a roleplay talent or something, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. very weird. Definitely yeah, it's not just going to fly on your shoulder and just shoot yeah. lasers or something. So... Yep, obviously Soul Conduit, Summon Jailer. I assume you can use the Jailer to juice up your big boy if he has health on him. Pack the Nihilin, just drop two points into that bad boy. Pack the Eridar, drop two points. And then from here, like, you're looking at Decimating Bolt or and Dimensional Rift. I feel like, I think, Decimating Bolt might be the weakest for Demo out of all the specs with the build that I want to play for single target purposes. So honestly, I'm going to go Dimensional Rift and Quizzer's Gaze. Uh, and you yeah, do but... actually, you do still have one more, I believe. Uh, you can spend yes, 11 in the bottom one. of the tree. There is one, one more, but that could actually, probably just be reserved for Burning Rush Test Demonic Gateway. Oh, point. no, you guys did spend 11. Never mind. You, you, you will you will have one more point because of Wowhead Diff, but in the tree that you've selected, it will have to be in the first two areas. Okay, yeah, Burning Rush or Demonic Gateway, for sure. Yep, okay. And then it would just be one of those two based on the scenario. And then uh, I'm assuming, what, what are you sacrificing as Demo? If you were in a dungeon... You need Shadow Fury. Let's just even say you don't need it to be exactly 45 seconds, but you just want regular ass Shadow Fury. Uh, what are you dropping uh, to get that? I feel like you would definitely want to drop Dimensional Rift. Okay. And if you're doing dungeons to get Shadow Fury, yep. You're probably... right now. You have it actually. If you drop Dimensional Rift. And you have the oh, yeah, uh, non-Wowhead. You actually have it right now. Okay, then yeah, there you go. Okay, and then, and then about the Wowhead thing. Okay, so th this is now this is the most shoehorned thing of all time. You're talking about like doing Mythic Plus dungeons. You, as opposed to the other two specs, changed exactly one point. You dropped Dimensional Rift for Shadow Fury, and that's it. Like I, I feel like the Warlock tree, as powerful as it is, and Warlocks again, it has nothing to do with really the tree. It's just that Warlocks are powerful. Like yes, they're giving them power just like every other class. Uh, that they don't have now, but they're just so innately powerful that their tree looks insane. So saying that they need more points to move around sounds stupid, but it, there are the same issues that exist on this class that exist on others, and that is that you are absolutely ripping three points right here that you do not you do not need a kick in all content. There are their kick is an insanely good thing in most content, but not in all content. And uh, accrued vitality is absolutely not required for all these specs. However, if again. If you've played Warlock, not having Demonic Circle is ridiculous. Like, it is useful all the time. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, I actually decided to, like, think about places where I use Demonic Circle. And I think in pretty much Castle Nafria, Sanctum of Domination, and Sepulcher, at least nine bosses in all the raids I use Demonic Circle in. So. And sometimes it's not even, like, a choice whether you use it. It's like, this makes your class significantly better at the fight. Like, even yes. just things like... Uh, like like Rigalon, right? Like putting your personal port where your soak is. Just like the amount of movement that saves is insane. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You also just use mm -hmm. it when you go down to avoid the explosions down there. You use it the moment you go down and you'll never get hit by the explosions down there. Um, okay. So we are now through. Uh, any, any final thoughts that we have not discussed on the class tree before we have all of you guys kind of deep dive into these specs? Yeah, I wanted to add a note on Dark Pact because it's up for 20 seconds. There were already bosses where you could pre-pop it like 19 seconds before the big hit happens, which makes it actually a 40 second cooldown basically, you know. And with the 45 second uh, cooldown, you could make it basically a 25 second cooldown or like a 26 second cooldown, let's say. Yeah, If you pre-plan the whole fight ahead, like Sludge Fist, for example, where you could like pre duck pack the pushback and stuff or like yeah. the the only problem with that is it's like if the fight has rot which yeah if know, the fight has rot and, it doesn't uh, work sire p1 has rot 
Yeah, it, mm. for sure. That's where like, it's really if, nice if for that. But yeah. If that is not the case, then that talent is actually so broken. It's crazy. People don't realize it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I also, maybe I would also argue that I, I don't think that this is a good choice node. I, I don't think you will ever pick that first talent. Like like it doesn't like it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's that you... that's PvP. That's PvP. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, I mean like I think, think about so, it. Yeah. If you're low health in PvP and you rip Dark Pact and then you go below an execute range and a warrior slams you, you're gone. <laughs> yeah. So it's very nice in PvP for some things. There's a lot of PvP stuff and a lot of like transmog farming stuff in here, like imp step, I'm pretty sure it's for transmog farming. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what what is yeah, what is that imp step? something? It's the one below Burning Rush on the right. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's good for old instance farming. I'm, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm using sick. it in old instances, yeah. I think there's a scenario... No, there's not. Never mind. They would have to... <laughs> there's The only scenario you would ever consider this in PvE is on a fight with a tremendous amount of movement, and you also had two or three extra points, which, again, is possible. I think they can easily give Warlocks two to three extra points by removing the need to select meaningless talents. Uh, or... So, yeah. Or actually a fight where you would carry something and it would slow you and then you could pop Burning Rush before and be like fast, I guess. Like that's the only case I can think of. Yeah. Like a raid. Like carry an orb or something. A little okay. Gahoon. But it won't ever yeah, get exactly. you above 100% speed though, even if you're slowed. Pretty much yeah. unless like, you somehow break that. Yeah. All right. So we are now moving on to the Affliction spec tree. Again, Zerwo will bring us down in a raid environment, talk about the different decisions you could possibly make. Some stuff isn't implemented yet. So, you know, you can be like, you know, depending on how strong this is, you could pick this. You guys know the deal. Uh, I was getting a lot of troll despair emotes in chat about the Affliction tree. And then I was trying to figure out why after going down. It seemed like the stuff at the bottom all seemed like it had decent choice involved could be strong has some stuff they don't have now like kind of a different single target profile in a way but there was just a bunch of troll despairs and i asked why and it was almost exclusively everyone mentioning just the very first thing you spend on this tree being malefic rapture so if you guys want to talk about uh this talent yeah i think it's not that much malefic rupture i mean it's it's a fine ability but the uh, like combination of malefic rupture and malefic wrath again is just painful like, uh, I hate that combination so much, like, to keep up this 10-second buff. Like, you have to rupture every 10 seconds instead of having the one-minute burst windows with rupture, like, that you focus on. You have to focus on that as well to keep your drain so damage high. I mean, the ability itself is fine. Like, uh, it was a nice shake-up, but uh, I would rather have unstable affliction as a spender again than malefic rupture, for example. What like, do you, you think? I mean, okay, I, I agree. I mean, unstable affliction spender was like, in my opinion, unanimously better, and it also synergizes a lot better with the dark player versus yeah. rapture. But like, the big thing is, is the current affliction single target setup. I'm sure Zoro will go into it, but mm -hmm. it has like, I think there's like 15 or 20 keybinds for single target, and you gotta like, um, there's like a 45 second cooldown, a minute cooldown, another 45, another 45, another 45, another minute, and then there's like a two minute, and you got like a you got a, a stacking buff that goes every 10 seconds. You got like four dots you got to keep up that are like a 15 second cool, 15 second duration. You have to do quantum mechanics while doing it. It's a lot. Yeah, yeah and extreme. when you add the second target to that and you're still play single target because the boss like Ashara, for example, where first phase was like single target and rest was kind of like single target and not multi-target anymore. Like if you play that build on multi-target, you'll break your fingers. Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's uh, crazy. But All right, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what this is like. Okay, so okay. I, yeah, uh, spend... One thing I want to okay. point out in the tree, though, that I think is really good for you guys is a lot of trees recently have complained about their capstone trees being way less uh, accessible because the beginning of them has two point things you have to invest. So I like use the warrior one for example, just before relating it to your all's trees. Uh, oh my god, I clicked the dressing room. I've never done that before. Okay, so you go to the warrior uh, thing. Every single one of their class trees starts with a two-point investment into something as boring as just a stat. Uh, and then you have to commit to that before you get to the stuff under it. Something that I think your tree does well is it immediately invests in abilities that are potentially good. And then it's immediately followed by things that make those abilities better. This, this even though, again, we'll talk about like the playstyle of Affliction and, you know, not having unstable Affliction as a spender kind of thing. But I think the way the tree is laid out throughout all Warlock specs... 
I think this is one of the best capstone level trees I've seen across every spec in the game. Okay, right. let's start. I guess we pick the cursed ability, Malefic Rupture, of course, first. Like, we go single target first, I guess. Yep, single target first. Um, take Unstable Affliction. Then to the left, we take Nightfall as well. To the right, we take Xavian Teachings to make our Corruption instant and deal, like, application damage. I mean, who wants a Corruption to be a cast, I guess? We, <laughs> pay, uh, we pick Pandemic Invocation and Rife in Agony. So we unlock the rest of the tree, kind of. Okay. Then we take Drain Soil, like basically always on the left. Yep. And uh, we take Siphon Life instead of Absolute Corruption because the more dots we have, the more damage our Malefic Rupture does. Great. Yeah, so this is interesting. How do you guys feel about being shoehorned into Siphon Life in like all single target scenarios for the rest of the expansion? Yeah, I hate it. Siphon I, Life is I, the worst I, ability yeah. ever. I, yeah, see, that's a, this a button is the pain. It it, it adds like it, I, the spec is already complex about it, and then adding that is just like it, it just causes such an annoyance. Especially yeah. because like if you look over at Soul Swap, it doesn't even put Siphon Life up, so it's like what what the hell's going on? Yeah, and the current two piece that we will spec into as well won't affect it as well. So uh, yeah. that's great. Love it. Bake it back into corruption, please. Remove this. Yeah, this is something that I wanted to touch on because I, I know. I, I've never heard someone say something positive about Siphon Life. It's like, oh, we're doing pure single target? Okay, I guess I can spec into this. Absolute Corruption is awesome, and it ha always has yeah. applications that are really powerful. Uh, I, yeah, the fact that you could have this, and even if it, like single target isn't as good, like you just don't have to think. It's just like, dude, what? Like, just re rethink Siphon Life. No, it's not a very well-liked thing. Yeah, I, for example, played mm -hmm. Siphon Life on Sire Denafrius while uh, you guys played Absolute Corruption and had, like, such an easier time, and I was hating my life. Dude, I hate this talent with a passion. Like, it's crazy how bad it is. Dude, yeah, I don't okay, know. first of all, speaking of, speaking of that, we're talking about, like, stuff we played on Denafrius. Do you know... Well, okay, they were play, probably playing Absolute Corruption for a variety of reasons, but one of them was we were... One of our initial thoughts on that fight was to PI a bunch of Affliction Locks at the beginning of the phase, uh, and just dot, yeah, like, dot all the, ads, yeah, dot all the ads, and just have a few of them die by the end of the phase, basically. But like, obviously, you were nowhere near the amount of affliction locks to make that happen. Yeah, one of the ideas yeah. was I was gonna rapture in the middle of the room because it was a hundred yard range, but then that guy grips me, so I was like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah if that guy didn't grip. I think and, that would have been and, actually and, sick. And the person in the shroud didn't get hit by rapture, but that was a, a more minor thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, uh, that could have worked. Yeah, uh, so. There's that, and then where are we going down from here? So this is another okay. issue, right? You never take Grimoire of Sacrifice on any character, right? No, it's just a bad talent. Yeah, I think they should relook at that. It's usually a PvP talent as well. Like, you pick that, just it does damage, and they can't kill your pet, basically. That's why you pick it. What about uh, Soul Flame, Shadow Embrace, Harvester? Yeah, okay. We we pick Soul Flame, uh, not Soul Flame. We pick Shadow Embrace for single target. I was already in a mythic plus setting. We pick uh, Phantom Singularity above Soul Flame on the right. Okay. Um, we pick Withering Bolt in the middle. We basically pick Harvest of Souls on the left of it, and we pick Sacrilegious Dark Strike on the right as well. Interesting. I, one thing that they brought. So this was a legendary that made your. Uh, this mm -hmm. is a it's different than like super old Sacrilege where it did the slow. Uh, but yeah, they, it, they nerfed it in Shadowlands, actually. They changed it because of PP. It was still a corruption slow, but now they made it to extend your curse. I think this mm. is actually kind of value in the raid, though, right? Because, like, just having to put up curses less, less often on a boss seems kind of nice just to have kind of baseline. Oh, yeah, I mean, They had sure. a really long duration already, but there's an application with that in the AoE build. It's a yeah. Spicy. Yeah, a spicy application. Okay. Okay. So now we have one more talent point to unlock the capstones, and we're gonna take Soul Tap on the left, which basically sacrifices 5% of your soul each to gain a soul shot. It's not a fun ability to press, but it's pretty powerful right now. I kind of hope they remove it. I think they won't, but oh well. What can <laughs> we do? <laughs> oh no. All right. Uh, now you have fully unlocked the capstone level. You have 10 points to yeah. spend. I, I wonder, Affliction has, looks like. Like four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow. Okay. So you have like, you you can only even get half of the capstone level. So I'm interested to see where yeah. you go. I mean, there's uh, a lot of multi-target and single-target options. So I think like Dark Lair, we should always pick Dark Lair because extending our dots makes our rupture stronger and our cooldowns. We always take Haunt, passive tempest and damage increase, basically like on a 14-second cooldown. 
pretty good. We pick Sorod as well. <laughs> like just another dot every minute. Like feeds into the rapture window pretty well. And uh we take Death Bolt as well. <laughs> we pick all four. <laughs> <laughs> that's you see, a lot. You see, you see where the buttons are coming. That's in, right? a lot oh, of buttons. Yeah, yeah that's a lot that of buttons. That is a lot of buttons. Death Bolt used to be a uh, ability for affliction in the tier like level 15 row or whatever. Then they put it to uh, PP talent and now it's back for some reason. Who knows why? I hate this ability so much, especially because <laughs> it costs three soul shots. But yeah. Okay. Well, then we take our favorite Malefic Wrath. Uh, Which is the no buff we no have no to no keep. Oh, you're not even going down to invest into these abilities. You're just okay. I don't know. We we will maybe. We we'll see. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we take a deliberate malice because that's 25% more rupture damage. Like we're juicing up rupture, and now we have like the option: Are we going into 10% more haunt damage, or are we going into calamitous descendo or whatever it's called, like below the deliberate mm -hmm. malice? which is our current 4-piece, which basically gives us free ruptures, which is nice to keep up the graph. Yeah, you and, have three uh, points remaining total. Yeah, we picked that. And now we have two more points, and we probably pick Death Dealer below Death Bolt just to make it not cost any uh, cost any soul shards. Oh, Won't God. probably happen on the, on the pull, but will make the subsequent Death Bolts feel better. And that's probably the single target build that I would run. So I can already see a bunch of problems with this. So like in most other trees that have this selection, people are going to meme that I'm bringing up the Ellie Shaman tree. It's just the only one on the top of my head that I know has this. Is like when you're taking, when you like path down to the bottom of this tree and you're taking, the only reason I'm bringing this up is you have uh, very similar things near the bottom. Uh, so do you see like how they have multiple things? Like uh, specifically, let's focus on Primordial Wave and the Ascendance thing. Where if you're ever going into one, it kind of makes sense that you double down and grab the rest of it, and that's kind of the idea for a lot of these, uh, a lot of these trees where you know it's not necessarily super overpowered, but it's just like you know, well, if you're gonna go ascendance at all, if you're ever spending this point, like these points under it are so value because you're like really investing into that thing, and it makes you want to you know potentially have a playstyle built around this ability. Affliction has the issue where it appears that. The abilities that are actually... They, they took the Ellie Shaman bottom of the tree and just were like, okay, this is just going to be our whole tree. We'll have Wrath of Consumption and Malefic Wrath to be, you know, kind of like just the one-point options that you can just grab based on whether you got this. But the rest of it is just purely buffing the things there. And you don't you don't go to a single capstone based on the new abilities. Every single one of these abilities has a capstone level thing under it, and you don't go to a single one, which is why you have so many keybinds in the first place, right? Yeah. I mean, the the one thing we could swap is maybe the one point below Deliberate Malice and put it into Pact of the Nathism to add more four boss sects to the death boot. I don't know. That depends on tuning how big it actually is. Also, I don't um, even know if that does four extra seconds on your dots or it just adds four yeah, seconds to the death bolt on, modifier. To the dot, yeah. Could be as well. I'm not sure what it actually does, but like it depends on tuning then, I would say. But the four piece is so nice to keep up Malefic Rupture, uh, Malefic Wrath over the fight. On single target especially like you don't really have to care you can even back shots then if you have that talent so it probably makes your one minute cycles or two minute cycles or whatever a, a lot stronger also it just it just seems like none of these are like really powerful enough to make you consider it also like dark glare being a i don't even know what cooldown this would be uh do you guys know what what wilfred's with dark, uh, two minute dark glare would end up being roughly yeah, like one minute i think like a little bit less even it's little... like three seconds per shot spent, and if you have, yeah, it should be like one minute, around one minute. I wonder, I really I really wonder if that's even like, like one minute cool? 15, maybe. What would be cool is if you had the ability, like if there was like a burn window on a fight where like Affliction Warlock becomes really powerful because you have, uh, you know, Dark Glare up every time. Like there's so mm -hmm. many scenarios that all of us have run into in raiding where it's like, it's not necessarily about what class is like the highest single target. Sometimes it's just the class that has a little something for everything. Like think about bm hunter and arcane mage on feta devourer right neither of those specs were actually even really very good but they were just so it was the only chance you had of killing those pustules pre-nerf right uh yeah like so this is kind of what that could be I, I think i think the fact that affliction is gaining even a potential hopefully they make this note a little bit better uh 
the they they make this a potential like one minute cooldown i think that gives affliction like a lot of higher viability in raids the only issue is that warlock also has a one minute really strong dps class already so it doesn't like give warlock high a high level warlock a niche that warlocks don't already possess yeah the thing is like i gladly take wilfrid's over death bolt because i hate death bolt like uh, the, just the awful ability but um the thing is if you have a one minute dark layer your one minute Sora cycles actually become really big so if you have maybe one minute burst windows that could be like a niche, maybe niche but then again, Death Bolt would also fit that niche because it's 30 seconds. So it's uh, tough. I would I would just like them to remove Death Bolt, honestly. <laughs> like just remove it, man. Is there is there is there something if you guys this I'm kind of putting all three of you on the spot, but if you guys think Death Bolt is like a huge issue, we don't even need to talk about Malefic Rapture because you guys are just saying a previous version of Affliction where Unstable Affliction was the spender is just a better version of Affliction than Malefic Rapture, right? That all of you are saying that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you, we've already had this discussion. Okay. If you guys wanted to replace Death Bolt and you guys thought that was the most problematic, least fun thing in the bottom of the tree, is there anything you would want to bring back from Affliction that you think would be nice that this class doesn't really have right now or solves a problem that the class has? I can't think of anything on the top of my head. I mean, Dark Soul, you can't put, put there. It's way too strong, I think, for Capstone. I'm not sure what you would put there. I mean, the thing is, Death Bolt is, is the PvP talent, basically, yeah. But we're forced also, to take it in um, PvE because it's probably good. So. There's a... I don't know if you've like, touched on this, but Creeping Death is a huge problem with the Rapture playstyle. That's actually a damage loss. Um, Rapture. Oh, oh, this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, really bad. They've brought back this talent again, and no one has ran it ever since Rapture has been put in the game because it's just horrible to manage with Rapture, and it just makes you lose damage. You never pick it. And you need to invest uh, two points into DSS before you even take it. So you will never take it. <laughs> Do you know the actual values of the haste and crit it gives you? No. Well, if it's anything like the legendary, I don't. right? But... It's probably 5%. But... Yeah. Uh, what about the nodes under haunt? Uh, these two, seized vitality and haunted soul. Yeah. Those are like the haunted soul is really OP. It basically gives you AOE infinite range haunt with te like 10% additional damage to haunt, so 20% more dot damage. So that could work in like a multi-target council-based fight. Uh, you're always going to pick that talent oh, that for sounds sure. So, uh, yeah, we haven't even talked about Affliction in an AoE environment yet, because something I was going to ask yeah. is like something that almost every DPS spec in the game has is one capstone or at least one row of the capstone is specifically like kind of designed to be something that makes them more powerful in AoE scenarios. Uh, I was wondering if Affliction had that, but it sounds like that sounds like it would kind of help most AOE environments a lot. Uh, so let's let's actually kind of rebuild this and think of this as like a uh, from a Mythic Plus scenario. And just go yeah. go from it from that level. What's up, Tisha? Can I step in? Um, yeah, yeah. There is actually a replacer to Death Bolt. Could use Rapid Contagion. It's a current PvP talent. True. A bit a bit better than the old Death Bolt in terms of what the AF playstyle should be versus what this is. What is that called? What is the ability called? Rapid Contagion. Yeah, it costs three shots and it basically makes your dots tick faster, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For it's X almost seconds. identical to Death Bolt, but it's for dot ticking, not for a big... I would like that way more than Death Bolt, for sure. Okay, that's an excellent suggestion. Uh, Alright, AoE, AoE Affliction. Okay, well, we take uh, Malefic Rupture again. We take Unstable Affliction always. We take Seed of Corruption this time. <laughs> we take Sow the Seeds, really nice talent. We take Savian Teachings again. We take Rife and Agony. And we take Agonizing Corruption. Uh, where is... On the that? right. Oh, okay. Right. So one thing that I want to point out before going on is you guys... It, I know it sounds stupid, but like the fact that you were able to make a single target raid build without even thinking about Seed of Corruption, the fact that you do have Seed of Corruption kind of on its own path that doesn't really interact with anything else is nice. Uh, that yeah, you, for sure. Uh, yeah. and, and a lot of classes do not have this. It's like much more spread out. It seems like in all three trees, actually, they did a good job with this. There, there's also, like you could argue that you don't actually, like there's a build for Mythic Plus, maybe high fortified Mythic Plus or something, where you don't even take Seed of Corruption, but you go like a more dot-based, multi-dot build, basically, instead of Seed Spam, but we go for Seed Spam for now. Okay. So, um, 
We take Vitaint instead of Phantom Singularity this time. Okay. We take uh, Absolute Corruption, of course. Big. We take uh, Soul Flame. Really nice if there's a lot of small ads maybe surrounding a big ad or something if they all explode. That big. happens a lot more in dungeons now, I feel like, than it used to. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you remember in Court of Stars, the small mana worms uh, oh, yeah. surrounding it, the construct, when they blew up, they just one shot the construct basically. Think about every pull in Gambit. They have like lower health mobs that just die super yeah. fast. It's yeah, yeah it's super exactly. Good. <laughs> I still remember the first pull in Arcway. Oh yeah, that was the best. Oh, yeah, that works as well with the blobs. Or the uh, current um, the current faded raid essence. Then you pick Secular Stark Strike, and now there's the interaction between Vitaint, Sacralash, uh, and uh, Amplify Curse from the General Tree, because okay. Vitaint now also applies the Slow Curse to eight targets. Oh, okay. And with Amplify Curse, you can make that slow a seventy percent eight target oh, slow. That is on so range, good. Basically. That is so and, good. And it's permanent. Yeah, with Sacral Stack Strike, if you put a seed in there before or something, and you apply Corruption with Absolute Corruption, the Corruption will stay indefinitely and will refresh the curse indefinitely. So they will keep being slowed forever, which is uh, pretty that is, insane. That is definitely insane. Yeah, <laughs> that is very like, good. I'm, I'm sad that Vitaint is kept at eight targets, but I think it would be so broken <laughs> if it was unkept. Like oh, basically yeah. Legion, Legion Sacralash level, if you remember, where like everybody had a Affliction Warlock just slowing yep. the whole, yep. whole pull. <clears throat> so yeah, eight targets is probably good. Yeah, that was something where that. Necrotic was like not as bad then, even though it was like the worst version of Necrotic. But it was so noticeable at the beginning of BFA and, uh, and yeah. in Shadowlands that you didn't have that slow in the game anymore. Um, now we take Withering Bolt again, just for the single target. Now we have three points to spend, and we didn't pick Drain so yet. So we're gonna pick Pandemic Invocation, despite it not being that great. In M plus, I guess, because you usually don't refresh in the pandemic window in M plus, but you spam seed and and stuff. So Okay, and yeah. then I went and got Drain Soul. Exactly. Yeah, Drain Soul is just mandatory in M plus because you get so many additional shards by just shard sniping. Uh, yeah, Drain Soul was always broken in M plus because of this. Alright, so here's where I'm excited. I feel like this is about to get nasty. Like you guys yeah, about to okay. do crazy There's, AOE. Uh, there's a lot of options so we could go with the seed build which favors haste and crit so we get sword and dss actually which okay. gives us haste and crit on one minute cooldown so every one minute we basically have a dark soul now which is pretty big because like dark soul is removed so that basically basically fills that void um and we have seven more points i mean we always get dark layer, i guess like Dark Lair is just mandatory. Maybe the, the Haunt build as well? Yeah. We get the Haunt build. Especially in high fortified settings. Like AoE Haunt is just so good. Like it's crazy. Okay, um, now you now... still you still have two points to go. Yeah, two points. And the question is what we do what do we do with them? I guess we get Rough of Consumption. The right side of the Haunt build. Mm-hmm. Basically, your target dies, you stack up 3% damage 5 times, 15% more dot damage, which is basically, again, buffing the dot build. And now we have one more point, and I mean, there could be an argument for Creeping Death, but as we heard earlier, it's uh, like a DPS loss in some cases. We could get Malefic Ra for like Tyrannical settings to have more single target, or Deliberate Malice for more Rupture damage. I would say, like, we're in a Tyrannical week now, we get Malefic Valve. Just so we have okay. something a target for bosses. Yeah. Uh, so now we've kind of, like, seen a little bit of both builds. Uh, before we kind of give an overview of what Affliction looks like next expansion and its power level and what potential niches it has, uh, let's just talk about things on the tree that you guys really never considered and just kind of point out. We already talked about a little bit of problem pathing although not nearly as much in the class tree. What are some abilities you guys would like to see buffed or changed and currently will basically see no use? Things that pop out to me, Grimoire of Sacrifice, uh, Soul Swap, uh, Pact of the Nazarzim or whatever that is. Like you guys talked about that a little bit. What do you guys want to talk about on this tree that you think should be reworked, removed, or put in a different position? I think Soul Swap is just flawed. Like it costs one Soul Shard, it plays your, your dots, but like... I don't know, it can be good, like, target swapping, maybe. But the, the fact that it costs one soul shot is just painful, I think. 
I don't know how the shard gen is in a, in a plus or like single target scenario or whatever, but I would say you're pretty scarce uh, on shards, so I don't know. I think soul swaps should just, should just be a CD instead of a, a shard cost again, just like Soulburn. But uh, yeah, other than that. I would love to see... I would love to see... Yeah, I don't even think they would have to really change soul swap the base talent as much, but if they just integrated it into soul burn again and gave it some power level uh, back to what it like kind of used to have, you could you could come up with some really interesting soul burn uses for soul yeah. swap specifically. Yeah, that could change soul swap to the old version again where you pull the targets, uh, the, the dots from the target, like inhale them and exhale them to another target and then make soul burn soul swap again cost one shot and apply all dots. That maybe would be a version, or it actually has a thirty-second cooldown and costs one shot. So uh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> so because yeah. I didn't look at the talent, it got so bad. So yeah, yeah. shot cost yeah. and cooldown is just bad. The only other thing that is like strikingly annoying in the affliction tree is, you know, besides like creeping death, obviously sack. You know, we know about those. Malefic wrath playstyle is, it is horrific. Uh, that, wh that, where is that? It's, bottom, it's the bottom left one you have picked. Oh, okay. Malefic Wrath is a horrific one. Oh, this Because oh. It, it just becomes this 10 second maintenance buff that you're constantly just trying to keep up. And if you ever drop three stacks, oh my god, you are in hell. Yeah. It might be actually like an implus that we spec out of this, spec out of Pandemic Invocation and go with Nightfall, Inevitable Demise, and uh, Drain Soul just for like. Oh, okay. Maybe more survivability and maybe AOE drains as well in, in trash packs. Yeah, like you could go that route instead of the pandemic invocation, which feels really bad in M plus. Like that's a possibility. And we could like maybe if there's like a dungeon with a lot of high health mobs, we could get rid of Wrath of Consumption and get Soul Tap again. Because Soul Tap I, like I, I argue that Soul is gonna get changed because it's just too broken right now. But uh yeah. Is it is this on the GCD soul tap? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I would imagine it is. Yeah. If it's anything uh, like life tap, yeah. I haven't really tried stuff since a lot of stuff is just super bugged on the alpha, so it's yeah, hard to same. actually yeah. test anything properly. Just going based off of like what I see. Yeah, it should be on a GCD, which feels just so bad. I mean, off GCD it would be broken as hell, and it, with GCD it's even broken because the shard on demand with like soul leech, which is usually always kept. <laughs> Uh, on on like HP or whatever, even with demon skin recharging it passively, it's just uh, I don't know. All right, too all strong, th but the button doesn't feel good. All three of you uh, can give your take on this, uh, or talk about it together. I want to separate this into two very different things. I want you guys to talk about power level and gameplay. We'll do power level first. How do you guys feel Affliction's potential power level based on not random RNG tuning, even though Warlocks always get the favorable end of that usually, um, but specifically the potential niche that they could bring for a raid, what kind of damage they'll be able to do. Obviously, Affliction used to be one of the best classes in the game. It spread out AoE dotting. They've kind of nerfed dots across the board, but Affliction still has some power there. Um, what What is Affliction like? current looking like in Dragonflight compared to what they were like in Shadowlands purely based on power and potential raid niche users. So if there is if there are fights again that have spread out like concept based like uh, things then it's gonna be pretty broken again just because of the AoE haunt and the nature of like your dots extending with uh, the two piece the deliberate malice for example. It can also be a single target powerhouse if you don't have to move and it really looks like it looks like legion level of uh, good and then plus again okay so it looks pretty good what do you guys think power level specifically not gameplay i mean yeah it's just it's really powerful he's um, right okay yeah yeah, yeah the, the yeah, single it's... the single target build like obviously gameplay wise that's a whole another story but power level yeah. if you were to play it optimally somehow yeah it's a uh, really good somehow <laughs> Yeah, okay, uh, well, that'll that'll caveat us into the next thing. How does this class play? What is the gameplay of this class oh like compared God. to current uh, Shadowlands Affliction lock? So the single target version of Affliction feels horrible to play. <laughs> like you have uh, so many things to micromanage, like 
You have to get your death bolt in order. You have to refresh your dots before you press the death bolt for maximum damage. You have to keep up with your malefic wrath. You want your rapture windows to hit hard. Um, you have a lot of different kind of CDs, like 30 second death bolt, 45 second uh, phantom singularity, two minute dark layer, 15 second haunt, one minute sword rod. So like all these things are just too much. <laughs> like, it just You're not even taking into account chunky. that the class tree gives you yeah. decimating bolt and dimensional yeah, rift exactly, on top of that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like all this, and even the jailer, whatever talent on top as well. What like is you the... have way too many buttons. What is the low hanging fruit here? What is the what is the stuff that is not majorly class changing that uh, you know can be removed or fixed to make this less hell on earth? I actually think one of the big issues is that you have decimating board and sword at the same time, which were two different covenants. Like they are they should serve the same purpose basically. Like you should choose between them, or it shouldn't be an option at all. And um, then Malefic Wrath alone hinders you a lot because you have to keep this 10 second buff like all the time up basically and juggle it as well on top Malefic of Wrath managing your pandemic windows and stuff. Endurance. Yeah, sure. Malefic Wrath the yeah. biggest and then like it just feels weird that you have Decimating Bullet and Sorot, but maybe that's because I'm like thinking in Shadowlands terms. Yeah, it, it, I think it might be a Shadowlands terms thing because there are other classes that have access now to two of their previous Covenant abilities, but they both did different things. With Warlocks, a lot of them are just buttons and they're just giving you multiple buttons, but some of them had some passive interaction or they worked together or separately and they didn't really like... And also like some classes are just built differently than others, right? If you were to add something like Malefic Rapture or Malefic Wrath as a thing to most classes in the game or some classes in the game, it'd be like, okay, I can easily manage this because there's just not nearly as much going on. It's like when they added the current tier bonus to Windwalker Monk, where it's like, okay, imagine of all of of all of the classes to add something like the current monk thing, you're doing it to the melee that has like by far the most stuff to micromanage and track, right? So it's like kind of the same yeah. thing with affliction. If you why are you adding Malefic Wrath to a class that already has this many keybinds and this many abilities? Uh to where that can kind of be solved. But yeah, the Covenant thing is interesting because I, I do think there are some cool Covenant abilities uh, that are in the game that you did have to pick between them before, but you could kind of add them both back and it'd be cool. That's not true of all of them though. Yeah, it's just odd that they all have like different CDs. Like you, you just have so many different CDs. It says that Decimary Bolt 45 seconds, Death Bolt 30, Sword 1 minute, Dark Lair 2 minutes, and uh, Phantom Singularity again. 45 seconds and then you have siphon life on top of it yeah like the worst talent of all so yeah not to mention hoping for a nightfall proc during your one minute window while you have oh, the yeah. spinning bolt yeah fishing for nightfall or waiting for nightfall or it just whatever. feels weird to speak right it, it feels like i don't know if it's like single tide flicks at the moment like you almost need like a the green like rocket science to play it proper right it's like way too much stuff to like handle at yeah. the same time yeah it's a lot of stuff to micromanage and Unless like I've think been about ahead as well like no, you go ahead. Yeah, like imagine you are in a fight, like, uh, I don't know, whatever. Like, <laughs> you need to set up and think ahead, like one minute, two minutes ahead, because otherwise you, your whole damage is just gone. Like, because you get a mechanic like a bomb on Jailer or something, yeah? And then all your rotation is shifted back and it just affects every CD, which just feels really bad. I just don't want another Venthyr Moonkin situation again, man. Just like, Imagine you don't play AF like the whole expansion. Wait for demo then. And, and then yeah, and then you want to play AF the whole expansion, and then you just like show up, literally without even practicing heroic week, and you just spec Venthyr mm -hmm. on the day the raid comes out, and you're just like trying to play Affliction and Warlocks. Actually, Warlocks will probably still live because you know they're broken as fuck. But yeah, if if you put a guy that played like Destruction, Hall of Dragonflight into the currently single target Affliction tree, dude, they would do no damage. <laughs> it's just, oh yeah, it's, it's too much. That guy would like be lost, no man. Yeah, he would be lost in the sauce for sure. Okay, so Affliction uh, needs needs some major work. I now fully understand it is not just a Malefic Rapture, Malefic Wrath situation. All right, let's move on to uh, Destro with Splat. Uh, this is, I think, a pretty iconic like Warlock spec. It's always been the like... It's gone back and forth between being like the best two target class in the game. It has very frequently been the best target swapping class in the game. Uh, things like, you know, Raw Den 
ad spawning and just getting the havoc window on that ad like mm -hmm. destro has just topped for fucking almost 10 years in that scenario compared to every other class in the game uh yeah ever so, since Havoc got introduced basically yeah um so destro extremely powerful i think single t i'm interested to see what single target destro looks like because i've always felt like destro is such a weird single target class like they're so built for like two target cleave random ad spawning or currently aoe but like single target destro has always just been the most basic thing ever so i'm just i'm i'm wondering kind of what that looks like as well and their potential power level so all right splat yeah, it has like a big issue destro and it has had that for a while that we have havoc as a button which means that this spec can never really be like scaled very well for single side it, this has been like a problem for like a long time now right like if mm. they were to scale it so it would do very well on single side it would like completely obliterate everyone on like two tag leave and so on which is most like, fights. Like there's yeah, a, yeah. very very rarely is a fight sludge fist or guardian, right? They almost always have targets. It it got a bit better in recent years after they got rid of the perma havoc, for example, and made havoc only transfer yeah. sixty percent of its damage. But it's still not there. Like two target destro and one target like single target destro are just two different worlds. So, also, this oh, current yeah. destro build has some absolute demon gameplay with so far. Oh. <laughs> Oh yeah. You don't like Channel Doom Fire, dude? No, no, it's oh, the Soul Fire. It's, Fire. it's the it's the part where you're gonna spam Ooh. a four second cast. Oh no, yeah. At, at below fifty percent. Like Oh yeah, yeah it's gonna oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah, don't, don't, Wait, it... No no don't get me started on this ability, dude. <laughs> <laughs> me neither, me neither. Ay, ay, ay. Four second cast spammed. Let's get it. Alright, alright, oh, so that's the ability that kickstarts your damage. Yeah, that's you know? no, that is rough. That so. Uh, so the first thing I actually want to talk about is, uh, they actually made a post clarifying this. Uh, they give you a choice note at the very beginning of the tree, uh, which I guess in a pure single target scenario, there is a world where you might not actually want to select this, but you might want to path down and grab stuff under it. We'll talk about that after. Um, but again, imagine playing Destro in pure single target, probably not going to happen. Um, yeah. you, okay. They have added mayhem, which is basically passive havoc. And they actually noted in a blue post that this is intentionally for players who it's a low, it's a lower skill option. It is, they're going to try not to tune it to be better than Havoc. They want players who are choosing to play with Havoc to get a benefit, but players who don't want to deal with it to still be able to do things. They've done this with other classes now. They actually pretty controversially, they have made single-minded Fury for Fury Warriors. They've just come right out and said, we want this to be not as good as Titan script, but a bit easier and uh, for like newer Fury Warriors to be able to play it, I wonder. I, I just wonder what your all's thoughts on this are. Yeah, so I think I think it's actually a very interesting approach they've decided to choose because I think uh, one of the big things that people is like struggling with the most and like optimizing distraction gameplay is like the havoc windows because it is like very precise. It's like small windows where you have to do like 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 press the correct buttons to like do like really good damage basically. And right? you have to pull for it as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You have to like play around these windows a lot when you're like playing distraction. And I think like people is like struggling a lot with like making it work, like uh, really well. So I think it's interesting to see that they gave this. Also very interesting that they like straight up came out and said that we're gonna make this worse. Like we want to reward you for playing Havoc because it's like higher skill level. It's like very interesting to me. It's kind of front, yeah. Like they basically tell people, yeah, if you're shit, you take that. If you're good, you take Havoc. Like, it's yeah. A little bit sus. It, it is weird, but they, they've done this before, even though it hasn't been as public. Well, I mean, sometimes it has. Like, I mean, take Guardian Druid, for example. Guardian Druids forever have been like, dude, there has to be something more to this class. And they have given them some stuff with, like, the ability to press Moonfire, like, when it procs. And get, but, like, they have come right out and said that Guardian is intentionally designed to be something that beginners learn to tank on. It's not something where you have to manage your shield block uptime. You just spam Iron Fur, and if you hit another one, it just... It just kind of like, you know, it has like the iron first stacking mechanic, right? And then it just falls off whenever it falls off. That class is meant to be easier than other classes. And it is for specifically new players to get into it. So like Blizzard acknowledging that like most of their player base are not high-end players. And they want to obviously get people to play the game more. It's They want to bridge the gap between what you need to play at the highest level and stuff below that. The thing is, is that's only been reserved for a few classes in the game up until like Dragonflight. Like very clearly in Dragonflight they are incorporating elements of this into more classes than they ever have before. Um, I just, I'm wondering if it's going to be interesting. And then also I wonder if they're going to get it wrong. I could absolutely see with some of these, like look at rolling havoc to me, I could see rolling havoc based on tuning, just making mayhem better than havoc. For example, like just it, all, it like, doesn't oh, even work with mayhem. Oh, at all. 
it, it even says in the thing only havoc uh, havoc targets duplicate yeah, isn't like isn't a... mayhem oh yeah i guess so but yeah i, I guess like you, you uh, maybe they don't want that to happen that's yeah. just something i read yeah but... i think I if mean, you pick mayhem and rolling havoc broken. works yeah exactly yeah. because you could just funnel basically keep rolling havoc stacks up and do like 20 percent more damage to all five you're rolling the is... slot machine to keep that buff going yeah yeah, yeah i don't think that that's... will happen yeah that's very weird Okay, so for now, we've just kind of acknowledged and talked about Mayhem. Uh, can maybe come back to that later when we do the, the review thing of Destro after this is over. So Splat, again, I think I think you take this down for a raid environment. I think if you're talking about raid and you're playing Destro, I think all of us would probably agree you're most likely taking Havoc or you're not playing Destro. Like, there is a scenario, I guess, maybe where yeah. you wouldn't take it, but I just really, really doubt you are playing Destro in a raid and there is not a second target. Uh, that's just kind of how the class is designed. So just take me down a normal raid thing. We'll talk about Mythic Plus after and do more of the... Uh... Yeah, I was thinking we could go over like both, uh, like where you would usually use a Destro and then we can do the single type build as well. That was my okay. thought process. Sure, yep. Take me down. Destro, that looks interesting. Yeah, so we want to grab Conflagrate. We want to get Backdraft, Roaring Blaze from the left. And we want to grab a uh, Combusting Engine. Okay. Soul Fire. And, it, and this is why it gets kind of weird. So basically... On single tide, you are kind of like forced to take havoc because there's no better options. So you want to do like havoc into reverse entropy. Okay, is... and this I think they did this on purpose. So yeah, there's there's been a couple of trees like this where they still make you take something and they don't really give you the option. So basically, they're just saying you are always taking havoc as a Destro lock. You are never not taking it. They've just made that decision. You are taking havoc or you are taking this. There's no scenario where you wouldn't take it. I think that's kind of the area they're going with that. So that kind of makes sense. Then uh, all the way to the left, we want to grab Channel Demon Fire and the two buns below it. Okay. And the two buns below that as well. All right. Channel Demon Fire is like also like a return. It's like, I don't know. I think this ability is very hit or miss with people, but it's like, it's like a weird ability, I guess. It's basically just like, it, it like just spreads like bolts of fill fire to like every tide you have uh, emulator on. Why does it it's... feel bad? Is it because on a class that's already very cast heavy and very immobile, it's just another thing you have to have a long channel for? I think so. It's like, I don't know, it's just like a weird button to press in my opinion, at least. I don't really like it, uh, to be honest. I don't know what the other things. What do yeah, you think about it does... It's about the same thing. If it was like cast yeah. on the move, I feel like this button would feel so much better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It doesn't really feel impactful, and it also kind of requires you to use no channeling macros in every ability, aside from channel Demon Fire, so you can just spam other abilities without interrupting your channel Demon Fire, which is weird gameplay. <laughs> um, so yeah, it just doesn't feel rewarding to use. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then but, where are you going after this? Yeah, you were just about over. We want to go to summation. So this is the thing you guys were talking about that is kind of degen, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that thing is, yeah. Read that and then look at the cooldown of Soulfire above and you'll, you'll see all you need to see. So you're, you're going to be casting Soulfire every, like, seven globals or something? Is that right? Yeah, something, something like, like that. Some, something like that, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's sadly a four-second cast, so it will feel awful. But at It'll least you get your emulate refresh, so you don't press emulate anymore. Below 50%, you just press Soulfire. And this is a new thing, right? This is, uh, I guess, some kind of an execute thing being added to Destro in a way, except the, you could the probably 50 also... The 50% is a new thing, yeah. Yeah, Soulfire has been there for but a bit. You, like, never played, basically. Yeah, Soulfire has been there. They, like, really wanted to push in Shadowlands uh, beta, and no one like picked it since then. And I guess now they want it. Yeah. It's like, yeah it's There's like only one time I ever used this talent in this entire expansion, and it was for a Sludge Fist kill. Uh, because it was a one minute cooldown pretty much on every pillar and that was about it yeah okay. so yeah we want to go down and grab a uh, backlash then which is also like i don't know kind of weird i guess it's, it's just like, a four percent crit node basically yeah, outside of pvp and then the pvp aspect of it is like kind of there which is like fine yeah i mean okay. two percent crit then, node isn't terrible yeah i mean it's it's fine it's there right it's just the pvp aspects yeah, and then we want to grab both Eradication and Ash Remains. Do you like just... both of those, or is that just a path to the to the bottom part of the tree? Uh, I, think, I think both of them is pretty good. Like, it's like a mix of, like, having to spend the nodes, but they are also, like, Ash Remains is a uh, conduit from, uh, like, this expansion, which is al always really good. It's just, like, 
10% flat damage on that cast with an incinerate, basically. Because you always I, have immolate targets. I have some thoughts on Fire and Brimstone, specifically as it related to, like, the old uh, version of Fire and Brimstone, the toggle. Uh, yeah. But we will talk about that in the AoE version of, of Destro. Yeah, sure. Okay, so we get to the bottom now, which is interesting. We have some options here, but uh, some options are better than others as well. So uh, we want to grab uh, Summon Inferno okay. and Crashing Chaos. And then okay. we grab Reign of Chaos down here. Reign of Chaos. And so you guys are not taking Wilfred's, okay? No, not for this. So this is an interesting thing. You have you have both of these currently, but now you have to choose one, correct? Correct, yeah. Yeah. Um, then we want to grab uh, Embers of the Diabolic. Okay. Into Madness of Ashikia. That one is like, that node is super, super strong. It's like unreal how strong that is. It's like a legendary we have right now. And it's like, I don't know. It's like one of the best nodes in the tree. It's like really, really good. So is that, so this has no ICD on it and it just basically means every time you are, it doesn't just, I mean, it doesn't even sound like you interact with it, right? It's just like, if you press Reign of Fire, that Reign of Fire and the next one you press will keep every four you seconds. You definitely interact with it with Chaos Bolt. Yeah, you basically, you always like save shots for it, right? Like you oh, always want to a burst window. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And this also goes really well hand in hand with Eradication as well, which is like two up to the left. Uh, yeah, where, also where, remember we have. Oh, sorry. Where's eradication? Right above there. Oh, yeah, right there, here. In the yeah. Yeah. It goes very hand in hand with that as well. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. The remaining three points we just put in power overwhelming and chaos incarnate. So you don't even touch this right side. Okay. Yeah. Um, I want to the right side. Like the entire right side is basically just our faucet bonus from this expansion, which they have then also kind of nerfed in in some way, because if you have over ritual of ruin. On live right now, it's every 10 soul shots, and here it's every 15. However, there's a node right below it that then reduces that by 2. For like so it becomes so 11 instead of 10. It becomes 10. It's 2 and 3. It's very odd. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. But yeah, then the right one is more of like a like a weird single side option that's just kind of there. Yeah, I feel like Burn to Ashes, 100%, like you said, it's a weird single target option. I think it's 100% meant to incorporate fire and brimstone gameplay right like it wants you to like chaos bolt like it wants your reign of fire to inc like so you're reign of firing but then you're also fire and brimstoning and then you just kind of bounce between those two things i guess by having yeah. you just have two fat incinerates i don't know yeah and then yeah the bottom one is the exact same as like the current four sets but it's just like it just doesn't seem worth on single tide at all currently. Because also, I mean, I don't actually know. I don't know if you guys tested this, but I assume that it doesn't interact with Reign of Chaos either on the Alpha right now. I assume it's the same as Life. I, I assume not so, test that now. but I did not, yeah. Yeah. So that option is not really great for single tide currently. I don't like this purple inf This is the purple Infernal, right? Yeah, the big yeah. boy. Dude, melee. imagine trying to see sleep puddles in Grimrail Depot when there's just a giant fucking purple <laughs> infernal just like all over the trash back, dude. It was miserable. Yeah, impossible. Uh, okay, so this is like a. This isn't even just pure single, right? This is like. Is this like pure single or like a little bit of two target? Or would you change this on like a heavy two target fight? You would definitely change some stuff on heavy two target. Okay. Uh,. So let's actually. So this this is pure single, right? Just one hundred percent like Skolex. This is a Skolex fight. Yeah. Only yeah, one if time. I wanna, if I wanna, you know, come in a little bit at the bottom left, you have Crashing Chaos, right? But Infernal Brand is actually very large now. Yeah, I don't it's know if you've looked at it. Right now. Yeah, it's think, a thirty percent node. Yeah, every... Just a bit of the tuning, yeah. But yeah, both of those is actually really good nodes. Infernal Brand obviously being like way stronger on AoE, and them both probably being pretty good on single side. Hard to tell which yeah. one's better, but it's definitely tuning. But well, what I, would you if you had if you wanted to grab both of them? What could you even drop? Well, you would probably drop the Crashing Chaos, but the Crashing Chaos is also really powerful with the whole Madness Mastery build. <laughs> like there is a yeah yeah. If this is a this drop, is a heavy mastery build for sure. I think I, I don't know if you guys think this, but like. Power probably, overwhelming. Yeah, power overwhelming fight as well. It's again, it just comes down to like tuning, right? But it's like yeah. there's that uh, solid options down there, honestly. It's okay. pretty good. Uh, um, if I may, go ahead. there there is the like this is a very mastery heavy build, and your inferno doesn't really scale with mastery. It only scales with like haste and crit, like the emulation aura yeah, and stuff. Yeah. So 
what you could do is get rid of crashing chaos, get rid of uh, the mastery node in the bottom, and get all four piece basically. Also skip the additional incinerate shard gen in the um, middle, like right in the middle of the capstones. Yeah, yeah and sure. then basically pick the four piece nodes. And now oh, okay. you basically have with Inferno Band being so overtuned, thirty percent, um, like big, big single target damage as well. So that's the like that's the haste crit version basically instead of the mastery haste version. Yeah, oh, so you yeah. basically you basically have like two builds, right? Like the mastery version and then like the crit haste. Oh, version. that's actually yeah. insane. I've I've never seen that on any tree so far. Even just talking about like pure single, I I don't think I've ever seen like a different stat build kind of taking you down a different part of the tree even for single target. That's actually sick. Yeah. Would you take Wilfred's with four piece as well? Or would you still play Reign of Chaos? I think you would uh, still play Reign of Chaos because of Inferno Brand. Yeah. Like Inferno I mean, Brand yeah, is just the, too overtuned right now. It is, if it works anything like the uh, current Inferno Brand on Shadowlands, it would be individual per Inferno and they would never really ramp. That's the problem with it. Reign of Chaos but potentially. That Infernal Brand that's on this tree is actually the pre nerf version of like the one we have in Shadowlands right now. Oh, it, it. Is, does it actually do 15 stacks, all the Infernals? Yeah, that's what I heard, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, okay. and it's and it's 30% per stack, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know about the 30%, not the uh, Reign of Chaos part. So, yeah, that's 450% uh, more emulation aura damage. <laughs> Seems okay. Uh... How would you change this on uh, maybe not even... Okay, this kind of fight I still feel like, or this kind of build still has uh, validity on a fight like Raden, I think, right? Or like, like I'm not even... Let's just talk like full Lords of Dread. Like if you were a two-target cleaving machine, uh, either full-time two-target or very active second target, even like Council of Blood with dutiful attendants spawning every Havoc window, basically. Uh, what 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 does that two target build look like or change? Yeah, so basically, uh, maybe it's just easier to start over. I think. Sure. Yeah. There's like a lot of good notes up here. So yeah, cast bolt, flagrate, havoc, reverse entropy, uh, backdraft, wrong place. Sorry, wait, hold on. I uh, don't take wrong place. Take the other one. Okay. Improve conflag. Improve conflag. Got it. Yeah, and then you want to take uh pandemonium as well. Uh, did we talk about Combusting Engine yet? I guess we didn't really. I feel like uh, this doesn't sound like it'd be very fun to play at all. It's no. Like, there's like one thing that I would suggest over Combusting Engine. Currently on this tree, there's no flashover anywhere. And I feel like flashover would be just absolutely beautiful to smack it right where Combusting Engine is. Flashover is a current talent on live. It makes it so that when you cast Conflag, you get two backdrafts. And it increases the conflag damage slightly, which also synergizes with the talents below it. Nice. Yeah. I I just, when I was looking at this, again, I haven't played Destro since Mop, but I was just like, this sounds insanely weird that you're just always conflagrating after you emulate. I don't know. It just sounds strange. Uh, Okay. Uh, Where are you going from there? Yeah. Then I would take uh, Pandemonium, which is below the Haze one. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know. The last point is kind of weird here. I would probably just take one point and improve the emulator or something like that. Oh, weird. It's like, yeah. not really great options, I think. So here we get like one of the best up. I think I, I at least personally is very happy we got this pack, like Rolling Havoc. It's like really, really good for like multiple targets. Uh, then we want to grab a Backlash again. Why and are you considering and taking Ash. Shadowburn on this tree? Is this like a... This would be like... Uh, it would basically be like when there's like ads, basically, right? Something like... Uh, uh, Kiltusad is like a really good example. It's like a great shadow burn bus. So not super common, but powerful when it's uh when it's usable. Yeah, exactly. So it's like it's like a very situational point, basically. Okay. So yeah, both eradication and uh, uh, acid remains. Okay, and then uh, yeah. Four more four more points to fill out. Yeah, then uh. Then I would go back up again, and I would take... Let me see where we're at. Yeah, then take one more and improve emulate. Okay. Chaos Shard. And Flash Point. Two points. I will Something say, nice. it's so nice that you guys have this, and you don't... Like, a lot of other classes don't. The fact that you guys only have to select Eradication and Ashen Remains to have access to your entire Capstone tree is so nice. 
so so many other specs would have to take something like ruin or grimoire of sacrifice to like unlock a part of their capstone tree that they wanted and they would have to just grab something they don't necessarily want all the time i think that's like so good for this tree yeah and then the bottom part we built like uh, the second like the crit haste build basically okay. so you just like grab the two nodes uh oh i'm missing one thing uh i'm missing a point oh yeah, that's not the... the middle one. Oh, not this oh yeah yeah sorry yeah. there we go yeah so this is like this this could be like a two tired build this is like uh it has like a lot of cleave to build on we got a lot of good nerds right that's pretty cool yep yeah this seems powerful mm -hmm. this seems good for target swapping too this is like kind of kind of got it all is this like does this uh well we'll talk about the applications of it afterwards without going too much farther down this uh let's just talk about like just a straight up mythic plus build uh, i'm sure a lot of people can relate to this based on just what they're playing right now yeah uh, let's just go yeah cast builds and uh havoc yeah rain of fire conflagration uh effect draft reverse entropy uh yeah paratinex and you also want pandemonium okay yeah yeah uh running havoc backlash eradication ash and remains okay then up back up right uh i'd put inferno but again it depends a bit on like you can also play cataclysm probably depends a bit on like it's the key level i, I heard yeah, these two. yeah I, I heard a lot of people mentioning that they were upset that they won't have like cataclysm single target anymore for destro but I think that's not that big of a deal because like that that was never actually like a super powerful single target point, right? It was just the only one that would like was like relatively decent at single target out of that row. So skipping that on single yeah. target doesn't really feel like you're losing anything. No, not at all. So yeah, let's take Inferno there for now. Then we want to grab cast shots and flash points. And okay. then the exact thing in the bottom again. Haste crit? Yeah. Okay. And uh okay, so now I want to point out, uh, before we talk about the overall state of Destro going into Dragonflight currently, uh, I want to talk about a few nodes that we uh, talked about as problems, or, or sorry, have not really talked about as problems yet, and like kind of some solutions for them. There's not actually a lot of them on this tree. Uh, where is there any node on this tree? Oh, I mean, sacrifice. This is this is consistent across every single Warlock spec, right? To just like they don't have sacrifices tuning right in PVE to ever really currently be an option uh and it also feels but don't you also just lose soul link if you have sack is that true yep you lose soul link yeah. you lose wrathful minion up in the, in the class you lose like a lot of abilities in the class tree it's very it's odd. Just, i mean it's just so weird it's like right now sacrifice is just like a straight up to basic loss basically it's like such a weird thing it back, needs some back in the day um if you had soul link and you would sacrifice your pet you would gain 20 percent more health I don't know if that actually still is an interaction, or if you just straight up lose Soul Link. Mm, I, don't I don't actually know, because the only spec that has Soul Link on Shadow Lines is Demo, and it doesn't have Sack. Oh, someone in yeah. my chat actually mentioned it's another talent designed to be worse. They said that at the beginning of BFA, that it's supposed to be worse, but easier. I guess that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's yeah. also the PvP option. Yeah. Okay, well, then it just serves more purposes than just that. Uh, is it really probably, easier, though? Just when we are on the topic, I think... Uh, also, like, why they're moving, like, the kick to the, the player itself is because having it on the pit in general requires, like, you to have some sort of, like, uh, how do I explain that? Basically, some sort of, like, pit movement, right? Like, you basically have to, like, be, be somewhat good at controlling your pit. Yeah, and I pet think, micro is hard. Yeah, uh, people also struggle a lot with that. Pit micro is hard, but super OP. Yep. Uh, that, and that's that's why I think I think THD, I think, I think, I think this is the... The best option is you can just have a choice node. Spell lock on you or spell lock on your pet. The, the, yeah, that exactly. solves both things. There's no reason for sure, to remove yeah, it. For sure. uh, like if you there, would be, uh, there would be scenarios where I would not have it on my pet. And there would be scenarios where I have it on myself. Yeah, it would be great to have an option for that. Yeah. Uh, and then something that I also think is super weird on the tree is that Fire and Brimstone used to be super, super powerful uh, back in the day as Destro for doing AoE. And it's kind of just been a shell of itself for a really long time. Uh, and they it seems like they committed multiple things in this tree to it. I mean, obviously, they put it in the tree. Luckily, you don't have to path through it. Uh, yeah. But but 
and they also did like a capstone level thing that clearly seems to be inspired by or trying to benefit fire and brimstone what do you guys think about uh fire and brimstone as it stands currently oh boy oh <laughs> that's God. a big one yeah i mean yeah. this talent so like a little history it's been nerfed for six years but it hasn't been picked in six years don't know why it just keeps getting nerfed but it hasn't been picked since it since legion since since what actually in legion yeah. is when they changed it to a passive incinerate only and in legion it was 100 percent incinerate to all targets nearby and increase and charge in in bfa i believe they made it a lower percentage either 60 or 40 i can't remember and they might have buffed the sharp gen near the end of the expansion no one picked it still and then in shadowlands it, it's a 40 percent near the target give shard gen and now it's seven or 15 percent with no shard gen i don't even know what the heck this uh, yeah no yeah, one I don't picks know. it and it keeps getting nerfed no one's touched it for six years it, it would be so nice if this was just the active from wad or Ma. yes that would like, i mean that's like dream scenario yeah and they they nerfed it in the shallow and beta as well if you can remember in the beginning of the shallow and beta when everybody was playing like destruction and plus with uh necro lord and yeah, uh, fire and brimstone I they nerfed yeah. the interaction between those two, and since we have decimate, Decimating Bolt again, if Fire and Brimstone would do a lot of damage, it would be just turbo broken again. Yeah. Especially with Burn to Ashes as well. Like, you would have, like, a Burn to Ashes, Decimating Bolt, Fire and Brimstone, AoE, Incinerate, Blaster build, basically. Yeah, but that sounds fun as fuck. Like, like Yes, but it's too broken. Yeah, but it uh, sounds fun, but you, but if you played Shadowlands beta, you know what Decimating yeah. Bolt, Fire and Brimstone you, you, did. You would have, you would have had an AOE big nuke every forty-five seconds, which is like, which would ha hit harder than Chaos. Yeah, Bolt. but wouldn't, wouldn't you rather have that interaction tuned to be normal, but the gameplay to be good? Like, I, I feel, I feel like oh, the interaction sure. between, like Inferno, uh, Burned Ashes and Fire and Brimstone actually sounds so fun, and I, I don't know, I, I, I feel like there's, that's, there certainly has to be a better option than just having it be a shell of its former self and no one will ever select this right oh i agree uh, i mean honestly man uh, i i got a i got a feeling they should just like grab that thing move it down put it as like a fourth thing on the bottom like kind of how like af has one make it its old active ability where you spend a shard you on an immolate con flag or an incinerate and it hits every target yeah yeah it, yeah it's just if it doesn't have the ammo and the con flag and the increased charge in so bad that's definitely yeah. it's, de it's just definitely hard to see when and this warlock is actually maybe the class that this happened to the most i bring this up a lot but where versions of their class actually were better previously like like the mm. like the class design of warlock specifically all three specs and mop and wad clears current warlock like uh may maybe mm -hmm. new demo is actually like a, a new take on it but like obviously old demo was like super insanely good uh like I don't know. I just, I really think they should take it, the talent tree is the best time ever to bring cool things back from where they were. And fire and brimstone Destro was hard goaded. It was so good. Yeah, um, for sure. Okay. Yeah. So now the, uh, big talk about Destro, um, all of you guys feel free to talk about this freely. What is Destro's power level? in different situations going into next expansion compared to where they are now. It can be single target, AOE, cleave, two target, everything. I mean, with this current build, it's basically uh, every Inferno cycle, it's basically the same power level as right now in big AOE, like untouched basically. So I, I, I really don't like the Inferno playstyle because you have so called passive as well. You don't even need to spec into that one again. Like in the class tree that is. So uh, you will have a lot of shard gen, a lot of shard spending. So you will decimate like L, like giga big pulls again. Yeah, every three minutes By you're just, just going one to button. destroy everything. Yeah. Just like now. Yeah. Except obviously not every minute pretty much with what you have now. Yeah, it's weird. It's like every damage profile is like basically exactly the same as it is right now, but like three minutes instead of two minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. You could opt into Wilfred maybe and have like Infernal every two minutes again, but I don't know. Reign of Chaos is just too strong. Yeah, it's basically compared like in the combination with Infernal Brand as well. Do you think? Yeah. Uh, so all choice nodes should have some real element of choice, right? Like 
what needs to be done to make Wilfred's a more competitive option to Reign of Chaos? Is it bigger CDR or is it Reign of Chaos being nerfed? So the I big thing is, yeah, it's probably the Reign of Chaos being nerfed because this is a, mm -hmm. something that happens with Demo too. Is both of these specs, Demo and Destro, both use Wilfred's on live currently, but it's not because Wilfred's is good. It's not because of that. It's because the talents that go with Wilfred's are good. Demonic Consumption, which is the whole health scaling thing the Demo adds, and Reign of Chaos. That is what makes Wolfred's good. Wolfred's on its own is just kind of whatever. Mm. It's nice. It feels good. But is it actually good? Not really. Exactly. So the, so the answer actually is buffing Wolfred's then, right? For Destro? Mm. It's buffing Wolfred's or it's removing Reign of Chaos and putting something else there. Yeah. Mm. I think. Like nothing, Reign of Chaos won't really do much. Even it's, if, even if it's five percent, it's probably broken still. So, <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so the class is still yeah. really powerful in AOE, although it'll just be bursting at a different time than it does currently on live. Pro probably the best burst in the game, AOE burst. Yeah, uh, it's what... basically like the old Hearts of Atonement MDI pulls. If you remember when, like people were doing that the first time, like where we're, they're having like the long Inferno or whatever. Mm -hmm. I basically guess that's the same now. I guess that's like. Okay, I think that's fine if it's a three minute, right? Because like obviously three minute thing cooldowns that are that long need to come with some kind of power level. Uh, yeah. you, you never want three minutes that feel worse than two minutes. For example, the fifty percent longer CD. Um, yeah, so that makes sense. How does how does this class feel to play in a raid uh, compared to last expansion? Basically Are, the same. <laughs> it's like I mean, exactly it's pretty the much same. the same. Yeah, I yeah. think there is like in demo and like Destro single target. Like I think it actually feels a bit better. Like there's a little bit more single target things in there that make your rotation flow better specifically the things on the class tree like dimensional rift gives a added movement to destro which is very needed and i added charge in on the go for with things like uh con flag obviously and then if you ever spec into embers of the diabolic rem remnant is that uh yep right here yeah you just have basically a two target incinerate gen on one target which is really mm -hmm. nice yeah, it helps the spec like flow a lot nicer, like with that yeah. talent. So the single target Destro actually looks to be a bit more reasonable than current. Yeah, until you two hit targets 50%. about the same, I feel like, and then AOE is about the same. But yeah. those two were never a problem. Like two target and AOE were never really the problem. There's always the single target one, so they kind of helped that one out. Okay, and then I, I guess the main point of contention as well, just to bring it up again, since it happened at the very beginning. Is that I think you guys are Destro is already a very immobile spec. Uh actually I think it might be the singular most immobile range spec in the game. It, it if it's not, it's it's like right there. Um and if that's the case Yeah, and if the and if that's the case, uh having Soul Fire being not technically added because it was previously available, but having it be selected and then also channel demon fire on top of what they're already doing in like a single target environment, mm -hmm. that's gonna that's going to feel you're, you're you're making the class that's already the worst at movement in the game even slower and i don't know if i would ever make the argument someone mentioned this on stream uh two days ago they were like yeah just uh, what was was it kill jaden's cunning they're like give kill jaden's cunning back to warlock it's like yeah you know just give the tankiest like extremely powerful <laughs> extremely necessary raid utility class you know what just also i mean let them cast on the move too why not you yeah. know like i think it's sure. totally realistic that these classes don't have that but something like that for destro would be good or just make channel demon fire and soul fire uh a little bit more accessible to play on an already very immobile spec yeah they should cut the cast time of soul fire just a little bit lower it basically takes the um the place of cataclysm single target because it does basically the same thing like it just hits the target and applies emulate and okay it generates a soul shot as well which is nice but it Inherently does the same thing. So it's like a lower cast time would be nice on that one. Like four seconds, just way too long. Yeah. All right. Destro in the books. On to our last class, our last spec of the day, Giga Chad Demo. With, uh, we were wondering if, uh, if old demon form was coming back. That was some hopium. Uh, I don't think it was entirely needed because I think like the new direction they have gone with Demo where you are just an absolute demon manager, like you just manage a bunch of demons. They have like double and triple downed on that philosophy to where now you are just actually swimming in pets. I'm interested to see how the gameplay changes or what is different. It 
Demo definitely helps fill out Warlock's like niche across all three specs where they become a one minute class. They're also, uh, I think they became a little bit more mobile. Are, are they not? I guess they're a little bit more mobile than uh, Destro and Aff. I think on single target currently, they're the most mobile Warlock spec. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. So THD, uh, bring me down uh, a single target Demo build. I'm sure there might be like kind of a couple, but and based on movement and stuff, but just do like a normal one. Normal single target Demo build. Obviously, we got to pick the call Dread Stalkers, and then uh, on the left we got Demon Bolt. Under Dread Stalkers, we have Dread Lash. And on the right, we have Fel Commando. Pretty much, this is like always picks for every single setup. Okay. Uh, never stray from these. Far right, we have From the Shadows. Very nice. And then to the left of that, we have uh, Demonic Strength. There could be some applications where you might not use this, but there's a further talent to synergize with this on single target that we'll get into later. On the left of that, you have Summon Vile Fiend. And you'll want to pick up Carnivorous Stalkers. That's the... That's the one at the middle bottom. That one is the doggy chomp. Your dogs are going to keep chomping. It's going to keep from the shadows all the way on the right. It's going to keep it going. Very, very nice. Uh, there is the talent Felon Steel to the right of Carnivore Stalkers, which makes your stuff just do more damage. Always good. To the left of Carnivore Stalkers, you have Born of Blood. Okay. This is a... Um, it's just a current conduit. It's used in every single setup. It's super, super nice just to have extra demonic cores just constantly flowing. Under that, you're going to want to pick Grim Inquisitor's Dread Calling. And then from here, this is where it, it kind of diverges from the single target and the AoE setup. So you're going to probably want to pick up, in my opinion, to the right of the tree, you have Grimoire Felguard. Yep. And then on the top right of that, you have... Uh, Felmite? Felmite, Fel yeah. And then Fel Sunder below that. And okay. there's going to be some buff management with that. We'll get into. On the left, we're going to pick Demonic Meteor. The uh, left where of, is... uh, bottom left of Grimoire Felguard. You definitely want Rip Through the Portal. Two points into Rip Through the Portal. I think we're going to have the talent into uh, Demonic Calling or Inner Demons. This one's kind of iffy. It really depends a lot on a lot of things, but I'm going to just go two points of Demonic Calling for now. Okay. Is really nice, and we're not picking Doom, okay? Like, uh, you know, <laughs> I got a lot to talk about that ability. Uh, Imp Gang Boss, that is the name of an ability, yep. Imp Gang Boss. <laughs> so do you want me to... Yeah, do two points in Imp Gang Boss. Okay, so you only have nine points at the bottom. It's fine. Yeah. And we're going to pick Tyrant. We're going to pick the two points under Tyrant to give us back our five shards when we cast it. And we're going to pick Demonic Consumption right at the bottom. And then... We're going to pick, in my opinion, the node to the bottom right of Tyrant is Forces of the Horn Nightmare. I believe we're putting uh, two points into that. And then to the left of Tyrant, you have Nether Portal. Put a point in that. And then at the bottom, you have the Expendables. Put a point in that. And then to round out the tree, I think you have one point left. You just throw it in and Torn Ornaments, in my opinion. Okay, and that's kind of buffing the this stuff over here. Yes. Okay. So what what is uh what is different about this build like compared to now? What is the what does this look like to play? You said you mentioned a lot of buff management. So this one, the added difference is you have another portal and there's gonna be some buff management of Fell Sunder. Because you pick demonic strength as a talent and your pet has an innate fell storm, your fell storm's on a 20 second cooldown. The fell sunder buff is eight seconds, but your fell storm lasts like four seconds or something like that. So it's going to be effectively a 12 second debuff. You're going to want to use demonic strength near the end of your fell sunder into another pet fell storm. And this effectively keeps the buff going for like 30 seconds on the opener. Is that like, that's like, do you think that's, that's a lot of micromanaging or is it something that like flows pretty well? That's definitely a little bit on the micromanaging side, but the other one that is a little bit more micromanaging all devolves around the uh, nether portal at the bottom left. Okay. This is a new thing. Before, you would have to pick Nether Portal, Demonic Consumption, which is the bottom of the, the tree, or Soul Conduit. Uh, no, not Soul Conduit, right? Is it Soul Conduit? No, it's not. What is the third one? I forget. Oh, it's Sack Souls. Okay, it's yeah, we Sack don't need Souls. to talk about Sack Souls. It's, Sack Souls is the one bottom right of uh, Nether Portal. Yeah, that okay. one's really bad. Don't, don't, don't go for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Nether Portal. It's a three-minute cooldown. I know Wahad says two and a half. It's, oh, no, I actually changed it. It says three now. 
but it used to say two and a half. Anyway, it's a three minute cooldown on Shadowlands. And effectively, what we're going to be doing is we're going to summon the Nether Portal, and then we're going to spam a bunch of one shard summons to get a bunch of these demons coming in. And then we're going to fuel that all into the Tyrant with Demonic Consumption. And just get a beefy boy. So, so every, so basically, Demo uh, is still going to have. Uh, so demonic tyrant is still getting reduced, right? Or nope. it oh, it's not reduced. Oh, so this is interesting. So demo in this build is not a one minute burst class anymore. Just trying to get full uptime and not really, you know, kind of it sucks to not have movement. But if you just press demonic tyrant exactly on cooldown, every other demonic tyrant used is just going to be fat as fuck with nether yep. portal. And then there's the talent grimoire falcon on the top right. Problem with that one is it's two minutes. You're going to just use that every other. You're going to delay it for a minute. Ooh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. That, that's that's okay. So, yeah. like, I could tell you a little bit of lore on Grimoire Felguard. In BFA beta, about maybe a couple hours before the game launched, they made that cooldown go from a minute and a half to two. And it's just been like that ever since. That's why Wolfred's has been so powerful for the spec since BFA. So, do you but also, go ahead. But also powerful because you could use three times instead of two in three minutes, of course. Mm -hmm. but, uh, just wanted to say that. Oh, where 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 is the talent that oh you can just instead of demonic consumption you could play Wilfred exactly. to to get it so, down to a minute. You can play Wilfred's with de demonic tyrant, but I'll tell you <sighs> something. If you play so like you know how the damage breakdown of a demo warlock is like mostly tyrant. Yeah. If you pick Wilfred's instead of demonic consumption, your tyrant is like one of your lowest damage sources in the entire game. Yeah. So basically, you're getting uh like thirty percent more uses of tyrant, but your tyrant is not is uh, losing more strength than 30%. It's without... like 80 or 90% weaker. It does yeah. like almost absolutely no damage without the talent. It's like actually unreal how little damage it do. Yeah. yeah. There's there's two applications if you want to play with it that much, uh, like where you could do other damage because there's versions of demo where you buff your demon bolt by the amount of pets out. And if you have like a lower duration tyrant, you can have that more often. And the same applies to Doom, the legendary below that buffs the Doom damage by every pet that's out. So if you play with it, you probably go for Doom damage or Demon Bolt damage. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. So you would you would like talent into like Sacrifice Souls, Doom, mm -hmm. and then Kazakh's Final Curse. Oh, that's super weird. That's like so different than yeah. now. Okay. That could that, make that Doom pretty good like, on multi-target uh, actually. Yeah, it but uh, it's cursed a little bit. It is definitely cursed. There's been like a couple things that like make Doom a little bit better. If like something like Hand of Doom was back in, oh my god, it makes Doom so much feel so much better. Oh yeah. It actually make it like a very viable. What is option. Hand of Doom? Hand of Doom is whenever you did Hand of Gul'dan, it applied Doom. This meant it applied Doom on AOE. It simply made the buff management of Doom, the debuff management of Doom, and the uh, the weird global it is. Simply just, you did your single target rotation, your AOE rotation, and your Dooms just kind of went in. And every time Doom ticked back then, you effectively got pets, which scaled with Kazak's final curse below that. Yeah. It was a very fun setup. Okay. Because uh, back in, like, Legion with that setup, with Hand of Doom, you would have, like, 50 plus imps. <laughs> and your, your thing was 5% Doom damage, and your Doom would hit for some outrageous numbers back then. I wonder, is there a scenario where you could play Doom on two to three target demo, just for generation? Yes. Yeah. What would, for sure. what would you swap for it? Uh, what would you swap for it? You'd probably the Expendables. I feel like maybe, or it's got to be the Demonic Meteor, right? No, no, not Demonic Meteor. Forces of Horn Nightmare the, at the bottom. Yeah, right. the Forces of Horn Nightmare. I would say as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, where is that? The oh, this the forces of horn nightmare, and then you would drop that and grab doom. Would you also grab Kaz Kazax as well? Yeah, if you're going for that type of build, definitely, and you probably drop into an ornament since that guy's single target effectively he's a melee mob spinning versus buffing meta yeah. da damage. Yeah, oh, you could also you could also skip one uh, one point in demonic calling, I guess. Oh no, yeah, you, you can't. can't. Oh no, you no, can't. No, yeah, you don't have the thing connecting actually. So yeah, you would probably skip that. Yeah. Oh yeah, I see. I mean, all okay. the expendables. I don't know how good the expendables actually is. I I it's don't know good. how this changes to play in X expansion, but like when I was watching THD do this on the P, it was actually like 
hard to like focus on my character. Like the, the, the like you didn't you didn't go the boss, right? No, I didn't go the pit lord. The pit lord. Dude, I want to go the pit lord so much, but I but... I don't think it's worth all those points to get him. Uh, you sure? Yeah. You could skip it, it, like uh, demonic calling, go also into a Master's gambit to reset your core dreadstalkers and stuff, and then go into long. I feel like a lot portal. of that's tuning now. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But yeah. I think it's I think it's a more fun bit to have like a really big nether portal, you know, for like 25 seconds and then summon a big guy that just obliterates all melee vision. <laughs> <laughs> he goes in, he starts yelling like Manoroth. <laughs> I said, I'm yeah. trying to see, I'm trying to see, actually build this. Where, where would I spend this? Yeah. Just one, just one point in demonic calling for now, just for example. So nether portal, duration nether portal, gang boss, expendables. Exactly. And then you go to the middle right, bottom right of demonic meteor to um, Hound Master's Gambit, it's called. Put two points into that. To reset your Dreadstalker, for example. This is the this is the gang build. You just got yeah. that, that's just... how you that's how you kill the melee right there. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, dude, the Pit Lord is actually huge. And also, where, where's the where's the thing? Is it just Nether Portal that can summon Malkazar? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Nether Portal. Yes. So Nether Portal can summon like twenty or something demons of varying types. Uh, Prince Malkazar is by far the by far the lowest percent chance to get out of the portal. And he yells with his full boss quote and grunts and everything. <laughs> Does he do big damn? Is it like also an RNG thing? Like he hits harder than the other ones? Yeah, so some of the some of the pets hit a lot harder than the others. So you, so like you could just be popping your burn and like you could just be doing like, it's probably not that much because most of your damage from this burn is coming from the tyrant after it most likely. But mm -hmm. the like you just be like, all right, I rolled Malkazar. You don't have to pop your cooldowns. So he just like beats this shit out of whoever. I think that'd be co so cool. Yeah, it could be great. All right, so this seems nice. This is a this is a like like a raid build kind of thing. Now, how much of this are you changing in like a Mythic Plus scenario? Um, well, the whole left side effectively. There's that. There's the whole implosion on the far left. That's our AOE button. It's a far left on the top. Yeah, so you're you're having to go through Shadow's Bite to get that. Yeah, Shadow's Bite. Oh man, that's having it wrong. Yeah, it, it's it's not. What? It's Shadow's Bite is an oddity to get to Implosion. Yeah. So the it's other the other trees you guys were talking about, like Affliction has like Seed of Corruption and then it has its AoE shit. Destruction has uh, Reign of Fire and then it's AoE shit. And then Demo for some reason, uh, it's like kind of not all... It's Although Demo like AoE and single target is like much more synonymous with itself, I get it. But like the fact that like Implosion is just like behind something that is purely single target uh seems strange for sure yeah yeah it's definitely strange, weird yeah. but it's mostly just because the single target demo build is also just pretty much you can use that as a standard cleave build anyway yeah yeah it, it feels the like time. they they put like the dog notes on purpose like at least one note away from each other like in between every time just so you have to spend other points to get the dog bit we have right now basically just feels like that's on purpose for sure. They cover the stalkers in between inner demons and grim inquisitor, and then bottom right you have like the the two piece, the current two piece below doom on the right. And then okay. top top right you have from the shadows, and in the middle you have dreadbite, and there's always like one node in between each dog bit yeah, I component see that. basically. So what what else would you drop for AOE? Are you keeping the rest of the build basically exactly the same? You're keeping fell sunder. We have Hound Matcher's Gambit for the Fell Portal build, so maybe you can spec out of that. What other, what stuff up here is wrong or right compare uh, for the AOE stuff? I grabbed Implosion and I spent two extra points. It's you'd swap Vile Fiend for Soul Strike, because there's going to be a further talent on the bottom right that synergizes to make Soul Strike AOE. And what are you doing in the Capstone level for for dungeons? You're going Decon again. Okay. Yep. Decon, and, and then you... what else are you doing? Uh, and torn ornaments, and you're going down. I think you're going down the bottom right with command aura. And depending on a hold this for me, tuning it looks really good. Yeah, yeah I see this. So you like throw your axe at the target, just so you like press the button, and then it just does damage for X amount of time. And then while its axe is thrown or it's unarmed for however long it actually does that damage, it'll just be punching all the mobs and then AoEing with all of its punches. That's right. <laughs> 
Yeah, that sounds That's fucking sick. That does sound <laughs> Dude, sick. I, I want to see him just go in there and start beating people up. Dude, uh, the fact that he attacks 50% faster is so cool. Like, I feel like you're going to be able to zoom in on him, and he's just going to be absolutely throwing hands in the middle of the pack, just punching randomly. That's so good. I yeah. really hope it's not like some kind of Fist of Fury animation. I hope it's actually just like auto attacks, but they're just fast as fuck. Well, no, there's actually animations for Fel Guards, for Fel Lords dropping their thing and punching people. Oh, He's I just didn't... going full boxing match and just yeah. beating yeah. people up. And there's there's animations from Legion Mobs that did that. I, I think in HFC, Fel Lord Zakun might have done that. Yeah, I think so as well. Yeah, I think you're right, yeah. The um, only thing that bothers me about this capstone, uh, sorry, is that. You need to spec into Command Aura, which increases the haste of your White Imps and Dreadstalkers, which means that your White Imps will have more haste than you, which means that they will deplete their energy faster than right now, and you as well. So you will have a harder time to actually uh, get enough Imps into your demonic consumption window, basically, which will feel a little bit odd. I don't know. Yeah. It's also, Why they choose that? it's weird that it's the node that comes before this too. So regardless of the potential negative ben benefits of Command Aura, it also uh, makes, it, it like Hold for me has absolutely zero integration with this talent at all. Yeah. Right? It's just completely separate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just affects the fake out both of them. Like, Wouldn't it make, is active and then... it seems like it would just make a lot more sense to have it n just be at the beginning of the tree. So it could just be right under like, you know something down here like a lot of a lot of other trees have done this uh I'm trying to think of the one that just came out recently that does this it's actually one of the paladin yeah it's the holy paladin so like notice how like like picture all this as their capstone nodes down here right but they do have like the marauds legendary right here and they do have crusaders might right here and you don't have to really touch anything else and it kind of falls in line with things that are already there on the right side of this tree for demo you have a lot of felguard stuff down here mm -hmm. you could just have this be a one point capstone in the bottom tree because it's just associating with those abilities in general uh or just have it you know in a much easier spot to obtain that doesn't have you going through things that don't uh deal with it yeah i agree i think a definite oddity in this bottom right is stolen power oh for sure you, yeah. uh, you might have seen that this thing is i feel like if you oh, look at sack fuck? souls, sack souls and expendables, it, I think you could just honestly like hit a little swap button with uh, stolen power and expendables, and it might just work out a bit better because a lot of those demon bolt stuff is on the left side of the tree, mm -hmm. and then stolen power is just on the right for some reason. Yeah, it would yeah. make way more sense if uh, sack souls leads into stolen power instead of expendables for sure. Yep, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's it just I, I will say while the demo tree seems like it's got a lot of cool stuff, the pathing of all of it seems really weird. But like you said, some of it does seem on purpose. They don't want you to be able to just go down and grab every single dog talent in like two seconds. You know, they, yeah. they want you to kind of bounce around and have to get all of it. But that's also led to the bottom of the tree just being very random and like things are kind of just in a weird spot. Like Hand of Gul'dan stuff is down here. There's nothing else that interacts with Hand of Gul'dan in like this entire capstone tree, and it's just like leading after demonic tyrant and it's just like after felguard like everything is just kind of while other trees have done a better job of at least being more thematic based on like where you're going there's a bunch i could use as an example they they do they did get demonic tyrant right because like demonic tyrant and then like the whole demonic tyrant ryan this is just just is just like the ascendance line uh so many other abilities are exactly like this and that's perfect whatever it's in the middle it's fundamental to demo you're never not playing this uh but yeah. But yeah, Nether Portal, again, Nether Portal. It seems like this. It seems like this is supposed to be Nether Portal's line, right? Nether Portal mm -hmm. into Nurzel's Volition into Gul'dan's Ambition in a straight line. But then it like kind of goes down into Expendables, which doesn't really do much for this. Uh, and oh, that's actually not true. Your your demons from Nether Portal will be buffed by the Expendables, right? But then Sacrifice Souls is supposed to be with Stolen Power, but it's on the wrong side. Yeah, it, it seems kind of strange. I mean, I can tell you why the whole tree is shaped like that. If you actually look at it, uh, whoever is the artist behind this, uh, beautiful. It looks like a skull, like the demonology skull. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's a it's a demonology skull. The whole the whole layout looks like it. Yep, it is. Oh damn, dude, that's sick. Okay. Because we have a little floating skull around our head. Since I also I also think the pathing of the outside of the stuff in the capstone. Uh, level that like doesn't lead into each other. I feel like the pathing of this tree is fine. There aren't a lot of decisions that feel really bad. Yeah, the only one is Shadow's Bite. Like Shadow's Bite into Implosion, honestly, even just a swap 
just a straight up swap those two things positions although there's probably a better overall solution uh how do the choice nodes feel uh you talked about how aoe takes soul strike instead of vile fiend makes total sense what about uh demonic strength versus bombers i like bombers but with the nodes on the way on the right with fell sunder and stuff i don't think there's a world where you really want to ever take bombers over uh like the thing with bombers is they're a 30 second cooldown they don't synergize with the fell sunder talents on the right and they cost two soul shards while d strength mm. is free okay what are some stuff that you guys you mentioned uh there are some nodes here you're like yeah you could take inner demons or you could take demonic calling it just totally depends on tuning sounds like you could maybe take either of those but it's not huge the doom talents even though you said you kind of want to avoid doom there's a scenario where you take it so i think this is perfectly fine here it's not really in the way of anything uh but it's there if you want it and it seems like it's accessible what about uh we didn't ever talk about bloodbound imps or bill spiders burning core on the left Blood, Bloodbound Imps can be taking an, an M plus setup, but I feel like with Soul Conduit and with Born of Blood, you're going to have more than enough shard gen. I feel like Bloodbound Imps is a bit overkill on that regard. Um, and then Bale Spider's Burning Core, you're going into that uh, Demon Bolt build where you're going to want to pick you know, Decimating Bolt on the class tree, go into Demon Bolts with Bale Spider's Burning Core with Sack Souls near the bottom of the tree and Stolen Power. Okay, this is this is just another thing. So just like the dogs are all really spread out and how we kind of mentioned that that kind of makes sense, it does feel a little weird that the Shadow Bolt, Demon Bolt stuff is as spread out as it is. I feel like they would want to like lend into each other more. Cause you'd I, have think to... it's, I think it's just really stolen power is the only oddity. The Most of it's on the left. Okay, I see. And this is also because of PvP, because the PvP build revolves around de decimating Bolt and one-shotting people with Demon Bolt. Mm -hmm. That's why, like, if you get them easily, all of them at, like, the same time, then uh, it's probably a little bit funky in PvP, I guess. Okay. All right, so it seems like Demo Tree has a lot of options and maybe is the least different build going from aoe to cleave to single target although there are distinct options to do all three so i guess the major question becomes this uh power level wise what does demo warlock look like in raids and mythic plus next expansion compared to what it is now i think in raids you're looking at a potentially not a two minute bursty class but a three minute bursty class and it's more bursty on those three minutes than it was on those two minutes before because of the nether portal and it's a cleave machine like you have so much stuff that just cleave cleave cleaves and your bursts are just gonna be bigger because of all the additions of fell sunder nether portal all that stuff just going together and it's just more and more cleave it's also more mobile than the other Warlock specs, and the yes. and, and if you're playing on a multi-target scenario, Doom makes you significantly more mobile as well. So mm -hmm. I, I feel like that is something that is like a little bit of a change. Um, and yeah, I, I just feel like they, they kind of... The whole... I want to touch on the three-minute thing. Dude, I know people all want to rotate on two-minute windows, because like if you've ever decided on when you're lusting on a raid boss and you guys have ever not had two minutes, you know the pain of like man this feels like shit kind of thing but classes that have proper three minutes anything longer than two minutes yes it's not going to line up with most other like things in the game on use trinkets and uh you know people's normal cooldowns but if they're powerful enough it makes sense for it. like the, they've accomplished this very infrequently like uh venthyr moonkin was something like this where like yes there was a lot of things wrong with venthyr moonkin but like the fact that they were actually a three minute you could plan around that had the power level that made sense for it to actually be a three minute uh was huge and it was like you know that's good things like that are good if it is an actual super powerful three minute i think that's really fun to play around because you know it's like the idea of ashen right like ashen had a bunch of issues but you know having the option to lose a one minute thing in divine toll that is much more consistent to grab something that is so impactful but it's just on a giga long cooldown that gives you so much viability uh in raids and i think that's something that like demo will have and it's uh yeah, I think it's really, really good. Also, one thing to note. Nether Portal's cool. But Nether Portal has one oddity with its entire flow. So, Inside. if you read the tooltip, it's every time you spend Shoal Shards, it will summon a demon. Okay? that Now, the proper 
rotation for demonology is get three shards, use Hand of Gul'dan, right? That's the proper one, get three or more, use Hand of Gul'dan. With Nether Portal, it doesn't become get three, use Hand. It becomes get one, use Hand. Which is very strange. <laughs> I don't know why it's not every shard you spend summons a, de a demon from the Nether Portal instead of every time you spend a shard. It's always been the biggest gripe that we've always talked about with Nether Portal for years. Is yeah. that one shard gameplay is just really odd. Uh, with Nether Portal. And the funny thing is, now that you have Demonic Meteor and Soul Conduit, you're gonna have so many shards that you can probably chain one hawk, one shot hawks like back to back if you're lucky. <laughs> so, oh yeah, you uh, can roll the dice and just yep. hand them oh, it's like hand RNG. spam it, go spam it. Yeah, if you just keep doing hand, 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 you're gonna have a lot of demons coming from that portal, and that is gonna be one big decon. Yeah, all of a sudden it can become like very, very anti here yeah, if it, like they're not careful. Yeah, when was the last time we played Nether Portal? Actually, I think it was Uldir. It was Uldir. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was really good actually in Uldir. Yeah. Yep. And then they reworked Econ. Yep. And then, yeah. Uh, then you got the uh, the BF the the BOD demo that. Uh, so that yeah. that kind of uh, brings us into the final thing, which is the gameplay of demo. So. You mentioned an RNG element. What is it like going to be to play this class in a in a raid setting? I mean, the RNG element, it's RNG with the Nether Portal setup, for sure. But that's obviously fixed by making Nether Portal just in all shards you spend instead of it being just any shard spends. Um, it feels a lot better, in my opinion. Playing with Soul Conduit and Demonic Meteor, it feels a lot better to play current, uh, the, the, the Dragonflight demo, than it does the current demo. Mm. And it's still kind of the same playstyle. Because, like, the playstyle of Shadowlands is not... M fundamentally bad for demo it's not a bad play style but it's just more things that make the play style a lot feel a lot better in my opinion i would really guess that the fact that you guys don't have to just maximize every single cast and every single movement to make sure your demonic tyrant gets exactly down to his minute or as close as possible to keep your cooldowns in line for a fight i feel like that has to be a gameplay buff like the it fact, is for sure. yeah, the fact that you're not, I mean, it was like extreme what Warlocks had to, what you had to do to accommodate Demo, uh, mm -hmm. especially earlier in the expansion. Uh, oh, so yeah. yeah, that's, I, I, I think that's a massive gameplay boost. Yeah. It's very nice, yeah. Like the gameplay also shifts a little bit from having a few less demonic cores because they nerfed Born of Blood. Actually, it's only fifteen percent chance instead of what do we have right now, sixty per head of Gudan cast. I don't think it's 60, I think it's like 30. Oh, oh 30, yeah. I, I don't know how many exactly. It's like 30-something with the conduit yeah. at max rank. But it will end up in less demonic cores. And right now you don't have soul conduit, so the only shots you really gen is like from Shadow Bolt and demonic cores, of course. But now, since you have demonic meteor and soul conduit, that adds like a little bit of RNG to it and like proc-based play, where you can randomly get like two, three shots back and uh, like adjust your rotation to that, which is more fun in my opinion than just okay i have four demon bolts that's eight shots i can spend in the next 10 seconds ish like uh, i like the other playstyle more where you can like proc shots and I adjust wonder, your rotation i wonder how you guys feel about the pure rng of nether portal too like I, rng in this game is interesting i feel like a little touch of rng in most things is fine like just imagine every proc or every single class in the game without procs right and it was just an actual rotation. That would be infinitely worse than the, you know, one or two procs that every class has that changes the way you play your class every pull. Mm. Now, Nether Portal, though, I wonder how RNG it's going to be. Like, if it's just, like, you know, think of, like, what, what's, like, the most egregious form of RNG in this game? Is it Chi Is it Dance of Chi I think it is. Like, like, if you're just talking about, like, the potential highs on a pull versus the potential lows, like... I just hope Nether Portal doesn't feel like that, where it actively feels bad to not get resets during Nether Portal, and if it's still pretty strong. So you would you would want like Hand of Gul'dan resets in Nether Portal to like be effective mm -hmm. and make you feel good, but not feel awful if you don't get them, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah but, so one thing yeah. to note about Nether Portal is, I, I haven't I haven't gone through because Nether Portals you don't typically play Nether Portal because you can't play Nether Portal or Decon on live. You have to pick between the two. 
So I've never actually went into like the theory behind Nether Portal and exactly how much health each pet has. I've never done that because I've never had to. Like I know on live right now, my Felguard has 75% of my health. My Grimoire Felguard has 75%. My Dreadstalker is at 40% and there's three of them. Uh, my Imps have 15% of my health and I summon three of them at a time. Uh, Vile Fiend has 75%. Uh, Void Walker with uh, Shadow Bulwark is like 93% of my health or something like that. I've never went into the Nether Portal health thing, but if those things have different health values oh, and that, that jumps into Decon, it's like a whole nother... Uh, gotta, get, gotta get a math equation for this one out. Yeah, then you have the RNG of having the shard resets and the RNG of what demons you spawn. So yeah. the swing of DPS like is massive in that case. Like The yeah. demons do more damage and have more health, so your Titan can do more damage, and you can get less or more resets of shards. So, yeah, it's a like lot multiplicative of variables. How, how it's yeah. like at the energy. Yeah. It's like yeah. very like scary. The difference between low roll and high roll will be <laughs> immense. Like and then, and then on top of all of that, demonic consumption still is a health-based mechanic. To where yes. the more life it is consuming, the more powerful your demonic tyrant is. There's already some stuff that is happening in this expansion where uh, you were using health increases on warlocks to increase increase the power of their cooldown. Well, now mm -hmm. on the three-minute window, if their cooldown is you know actually stronger than it was before i think we now need to bring this up again uh there are a couple things namely rally that is a group wide or raid wide health cooldown on the exact cooldown as your super insane demonic tyrant now uh instead of it being on every two minutes and having to rotate two different warriors uh i vividly remember being on ptr with thd and maybe and uh not just giving ancestral vigor to thd but also his fucking pets uh, yeah. just, just to, just to, uh, double dip and get the biggest demonic tyrants possible and also PIing his fucking tyrant, um, as well as him. And, and I just, I, I wonder, I wonder if there's a way to keep the power level of demonic consumption without, you know, making it a little weird with it being based on external health buffs, but I don't know how big of a deal that is. Like that was something that wasn't really abused in this expansion. Like, I can only remember a few fights where, yes, we talked about it in practice, but a few fights where we were actually rallying for demo CDs, right? So, uh, I don't know. We we, we didn't mm -hmm. do it typically, but I did move a rally on the Jailer for a Tyrant cooldown by a couple seconds. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's it's we moved it's, one a, we moved one ahead like a couple seconds just so it's up for all the for the for the tyrants. I remember we did that on uh, Sylvanas as well. I think like I got asked, uh, when are you popping your Tyrant? Okay, we ready there now. Okay, sure. I take it, but uh, I yeah. don't like it either. The thing is now is that Tyrant was, the big fat ass Tyrant was two minutes last expansion, and now it's three, the exact cooldown of Rally. So I'm just a little, I'm a little concerned with, mm -hmm. uh, with maybe just having the first Rally you have on a fight, depending on how hard the encounter is, and specifically if Rally is very good on it, if you're, if it just becomes a DPS cooldown, and it makes Warriors even more of like, you know, they're getting a lot of raid utility. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Something, something to think about. Vamp blood, yeah, I don't... vamp blood for DKs. Uh, oh yeah, right. In the party with Themo. I don't see how they can fix this. Like they could make pets maybe only scale with your base health, basically that you have from your talents, and uh, get like external health buffs out of the equation. But I don't think that's feasible. It'd probably be um, the same solution they had with um, the old uh, decon from uh, BFA, where imps had energy, and based on each imp's energy. It was 10% mm -hmm. per, per imp cast. Um, so if you had 30 imps, each imp casted five times. Um, it was 10%. <laughs> so it goes into yeah, right. like the... Yeah, like you could have each demon effectively have a power level. When that demon is out, it effectively grants power to the tyrant. Yeah, and like Instead the power decreases healthy. according to their like duration or whatever. Like if Dreadstalkers are six seconds away, they only have like... 50% of the power they used to have on like, I, I didn't summon. like the whole duration thing from BFA. That one was kind of... No, I didn't like it either, but... Yeah, I don't it, know. Would, it would probably just be the ones you have out. Because I feel like the duration thing is like... You're going into the... Uh... Oh, someone in chat mentioned that Brewma that Brewmaster actually has stuff that scales off of predicted max HP instead of percent max HP, so buffs don't affect it. I didn't know that, actually. Oh. Wait, what, what is that spell? That would actually hard fix that. <laughs> If, uh, Wait, if maybe exists. decon actually works that way already. I didn't test it, so. Oh, it definitely yes. it definitely works that way currently. I, I'm oh, pretty okay. sure. Well, I, I don't know about like right now, but we did a fucking ton. That's the only reason we ran Blood Decay in Sanctum 
was we. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, in uh, Dragonflight. Oh, Dragonflight. They... Yeah, yeah. It'd be hard for me to see it on Dragonflight without a, because I yeah, use same. a weak word to calculate all the pet health. Does Demo have two kicks now as well? Uh, yes. It, it does, but I assume that's it's... not intentional. Yeah. It's gonna Cause, get Because currently the other specs also have two kicks as well. Like the pet still has the kick. But they've oh, said that they don't want the I pet see. To have I mean, I think it's possible that's true because, like, currently there is a ranged DPS in the game that has two forms of an interrupt, right? Solar Beam and Skull Bash, if you decide to do it. So, uh, it's not completely unheard of to think that a class could have two. Although, that definitely sounds, uh, if there's a class that doesn't specifically need that, Warlock, uh, would definitely be high up on that list. So, uh, yeah, probably a bug. All right, I think we're I think we're chilling. Uh, it's not, I think we like pretty thoroughly went over everything. This was an excellent conversation. You guys were were really awesome with this. This is a, uh, as expected, warlocks are always strong, so they're continuing to be strong. Probably, I think actually I looked at this the the most on average, like to get into a raid, you need to have like you know a raid buff or some kind of raid utility, and warlock has just been you know just as required as any hour long raid buff for a long time for hellstones and gates and all that stuff. To where other classes are sitting outside the raid hoping to get into the raid based on whether just you know they basically get rng slot machine if they're tuned to be good enough to be in the raid where warlocks have never really had to do that all three specs have very powerful niches they're probably the tankiest class in the game certainly outside of the cheat death category which actually warlocks are now losing which is somewhat interesting but not like it would matter too much uh with losing dreamweaver um and yeah you guys are 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 a god class and you know you not only have you not needed like RNG slot roll tuning to get into a raid, but you've also consistently had one of your specs be the best spec in the game for, I mean, just a ridiculous amount of time. So looks seems like all you guys are saying Warlocks seem like they still are con keeping a lot of their power, gaining in a few ways, and the specs look uh, thematically interesting to play and keep their power level. That's good. Yep. And to add to the tankiness, actually, Destruction will be the new tanky spec because their mastery is still in place, which also re reduces damage taken. So, uh, even more unkillable. <laughs> Gonna be completely immortal. Especially yeah. if you decide to opt for the mastery build, okay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Build. You do more damage and you take less. All right, thanks for thanks for coming on. We will. I'll keep this chat together if you guys just want to talk about warlock shit or whatever. But if they make any major changes to your all's tree, uh, I may just like pop open one day. Hopefully, if uh, Zara was still awake, and I'll just be like, "Yo, do you guys want to come talk about the changes with each other?" Not n way shorter than this, like legit, like thirty minutes. Um, but it would just be like talking over blue posts that they have. And I'll, I'll just let you guys know when that's happening. Yeah, sure. I'm done. I have All no right. life. Yep. Same. All right. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for coming. Yep. See you. Yep. Yep. See you. Yeah. See you. All right. Another one in the books.